Welcome to everyone who's watching along at home. Uh, this is another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles. A homebrew D&D 5th edition campaign for which my players have been scouring the world, or at least one island, for some things recently. My name is Mark, the Encaffeinated One, uh, Mark Kilfoil, the GM and, I guess, host of this crazy madness the one with which they put up. Yes, I think I got the grammar right, finally. Uh, who are they that I keep referring to? Well, my uh, my uh, players, my wonderful players around the table. Shall we begin our introductions? I'm Marie. I play Elzara, the Wood Elf Druid. I am also the social media person on the Facebook page, Legends of the Drowned Isles, and I am Marianna Kimmy in the uh, comments on the YouTube page. Uh, so interact with me, please do. I love, I love talking to people. She's very interactive. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to be. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Jody. I play Clark, the half-orc fighting rogue. And uh, he's just hanging out with the gang here and see what's going on. Try to earn some money. Uh, I'm Pat. I play Emeryn Elisar, everyone's favorite cleric. Uh, currently watching over a bunch of exhausted, unconscious people. Hi, I'm Nax. I play Zacchaeus, half-elf wizard. And I have nothing clever to say right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, we do apologize if there's a little bit of extra buzz on the sound. We have added one more fan. Summer will eventually end. Uh, if it does not, it's just off screen. So the, 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 uh, Six Max months is of the summer. full benefit of the fan at the moment. <laughs> Basically what it feels like. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's something I wanted to bring up uh, just while we're on here, because something is going to change with Emron. Uh, I argued very much against the the ruling of the spear, uh, his spiritual weapon not having getting that damage bonus from his ability. Uh, but looking it up, the uh, that's exactly what they ruled. It doesn't count because I think their descriptions of the spell are crappy. But uh, the ru uh, the ruling sits, so I'm going to go with that, so his spear will not be getting the damage bonus and things. I have an idea for where he might use it. Okay. Just so pe in case people wonder why I suddenly changed that, uh, I'm just going with the actual ruling. Yeah, and prior to coming on to the broadcast today, broadcast, recording, whatever this is, uh, we did discuss some of the, the current rules to make sure we're up to date, and some of them we agreed with, most of them we agreed with. I guess really I'm the only one who doesn't agree with things from time to time. Um, so, in case you're wondering, more or less canon 5th uh, edition with small minor adjustments. A uh, bit of a recap about what happened last time. Uh, one question, if one were to try to pronounce the group name, how would one do it? Because the group name is O-V-V-N uh, and... Uh, there's no, is there an S? There is oh, an yeah. S. Yeah. Yep. So O V V N S. Um, and if you want to also elucidate what that actually stands for, uh, it stands for Obduro Veritas Vite Niteo Sodalitas. Although, if I actually pronounced the way Latin's supposed to be pronounced, it would be Obduro Veritas Vite Niteo Sodalitas, which would make it owns. <laughs> okay. So is it uh, something you'd say the Because the V's are supposed to be though. pronounced like W's. It just sounds weird when we do it because we're used to seeing it done as a V all the time. And ironically, with double V's, it becomes a W. So, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that was part of the well, joke, yeah. Yeah, that should have been double U's. But uh, I don't think <laughs> that we publicly call the group owns. You know, uh, it's, uh, it's more of a, I think it's more of a, a, an in-joke thing. Okay. Um, it, it's more of an in-joke, our, our original name thought type thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess when I'm I, the reason I'm asking is I will be using the group name on occasion when I'm doing my recaps and things. Uh, I up to now used the group mm. or the, the 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 PCs. I think at one point the the characters, but yeah. um, if I can just say owns, then I will do so. Yeah, That's or just OVVNS. Uh, it could be or just Sodalitas because that I think means group. Okay, uh, I'll try to remember the last one uh, in the future. I think Elzara, because in the uh, in the logo, it has the V's crossed, right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, made, I made the kerning so that it would look yeah. like a W. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Elzara would have giggled, and she calls it Owns. Yeah, Amron. Uh, <laughs> unless it's brought up to to Amron, uh, he does not think of that. 
I guess I'm looking. And now that it's been done, we wouldn't change it. <laughs> I'm I've got uh, oh, oh, the the name Ov uh, Ovvns. I think it's in six places in my <laughs> description here, so it oh, was going to come up. Uh, and the I apologize. The summary ended up kind of long because I, as the old, uh, often attributed to Winston Churchill quote goes, I didn't have time to shorten it. So. What happened in the previous session? After a good night's rest, OVVNS owns. Uh, what was the other one? Seduro? At Sodalitas. Sodalitas. I think I'm going to have to use that because uh, it's going to mess me up. After a good night's rest, Sodalitas faced their last remaining task figuring out how to get a portion of the Star Stone, what the Vespari revere as their egg, which would be used to power the Umbelic. Looking closer, they discovered that the outer edges had gone dark and lifeless, but a deep amber glow remained in the center of the stone. Judging from the decay, it was clear the power of the, of the egg would wane over some time, but it seems likely that hundreds of years of power remains. After some debate and some reassurance given to Queen Melifora, it was decided that Amrun would attempt to shape a portion of the stone out with a spell. A bubble formed on the surface of the egg, glowing brighter amber and becoming wrapped in the darker outside crust, Suddenly, there was a blinding amber flash, and Sodalitas, yeah, Sodalitas, found themselves falling. After a sudden painless stop from the fall, Sodalitas found themselves standing in what appeared to be a shadowy, fog-filled version of the Queen's antechamber, where they had been just a moment ago. But within the solid amber floors could be seen veins of bilis green and black. Each of them found a strange silver-gray strand flowing from between their shoulder blades into the sky, which is determined to likely be a connection to their physical form, they being here as projections into the astral plane. A terrible keening sound filled the air from some unknown creature, and the only landmark that seemed to be available was a beacon of amber light several feet away. The beacon appeared to be the same ball of star stone extruded by Amrun, but now suspended within the abdomen of, As of Avaspari, none other than the former queen, who Sedolitas had dispatched a few days ago. She writhed in pain and anguish, her arms, legs, and wings all bound with shadowy strands that led off into the darkness. As they debated what to do, an experimental cut of the bindings revealed them to be made of shadow, and a voice taunted them from that shadow, suggesting that they would be next to be bound and prove useful. Within seconds, the creature revealed itself, an enormous, muscle-bound, demonic being, standing nearly twelve feet tall, wielding a vicious-looking double-bladed axe, and with a large, leathery wings to float around. The fight broke out, Sodalitas, attempting to free the queen from her bindings, apparently a manifestation of an agreement she made with the demonic entity in exchange for power for her people to live forever. Sodalitas came under attack from the main creature and two of its hired goons, as well as the wailing ghost of another former queen who had succumbed to the process. With Clark's silvered sacks cutting deeply through the bindings, they were able to free the queen, which caused the others to vanish into smoke. The queen was beside herself with grief, and in an attempt at redemption, used Clark's sacks to carve into herself, pulling free the chunk of starstone within. As she slumped down, dying, she uttered the word of the being to whom she ultimately bargained with, Peturo. Everyone found themselves falling once more, this time falling upward, tugged by their silver strands. A day has passed. You've made your way through the, the jungle once more, out to the outer edges beyond the hum. For some of you, it was as though you had left the comfort of home with the entirety of, of the existence weighing down on you once more, making you quite tired. As an air elemental, Alzara had flown on ahead, and it seemed that there seemed to be a strange ship moored at the long dock attached to Port Alta. A large, multi-cannon ship with broad uh, sails and three masts. The rest of you gathered inward and set to camp just outside of Port Alta, just within the jungle. A night has passed, in which for some of you, a deep rest and the sloughing off of the last of the effects of the hum seems to have occurred. It seems now only the sounds of jungle around you can be heard. You get the suspicion that the reason there aren't too many animals approaching might be the Vaspari who had escorted you out of the jungle, somehow maintaining control on the border. You awake, 
still quite overly warm, but it's nonetheless outside the presence of the home. Before the others finish waking up, mm -hmm. there's a spell I want to cast. Okay. Just to check something. Uh, I am going to try to do a, a sending now that we're outside of the area uh, to the little green lady who wanted to be called the green goddess. Okay. Um, I'm just going to send um, hmm. Green Lady, we did as you asked, but we have not seen you. Did we not perform as well as you wished? Or do you simply not want to communicate with us anymore? Okay. A heart Thank you. passes as the, uh, the sun starts to crest the horizon. And you do receive a response. You have done well. My attention is needed elsewhere. Okay. And then you putter around for a while, I suppose. Did you guys keep watches? Um, I would have done our usual... Yeah. Okay, so you were still, you were asleep at this point then? Yeah. Okay. Same. Yeah, I'm I'd meditating. be. I'd probably be starting to get stuff uh, ready for the morning. Okay. Iroh once again standing stock still, standing up with her glaive in hand, but you Maybe. notice the subtle difference when she's sleeping. Uh, is she keeping the glaive as well as the spear? Oh yeah, she's not okay. getting rid of her glaive. Her glaive, and that's what she's most comfortable with. Yeah. The spear is lashed basically to her her backpack. Cool. Uh, Shank seems to have been turning and tossing all night. There is still somewhat of a residual glow from small parts of her armor. Hmm. As you've noted before, when in the presence of the hum, it seemed to take on almost a constellation-like look. At some point while they're, they're sleeping, I'm going to ritually cast a, a detect magic. Okay. Uh, and then just look at uh, at uh, the armor. Is it magical or is it simply a, a strange material? You're sensing a magic effect, but the armor itself does not appear to be magical. Interesting. There would be effectively abjuration magic. Yeah. the flavor of magic you're picking up. And Shank well, does insist on wearing her armor while sleeping, despite the fact that it does look pretty uncomfortable. She seems to be used to it, but nonetheless also tossing and turning. I Paul sleeps like a log. I don't think there's much I can do about that, but... Uh, okay, yeah, I'll just keep an eye. I mean, uh, there may be someone else who's taking a shift as well, but uh, everyone will be up and about and okay. have things packed up and whatnot. You rise the next morning. All of you awake, feeling refreshed. Those of you who had been affected by the hum find that passing. For you, Zacchaeus, where you had been so deeply affected by it, and you can kind of see a little bit of the re reflection in Paul's eyes as well, mm -hmm. uh, and actually in Iroh's, there is a, a lingering sense of loss. Uh, it is as though the, the, the power that you had grown accustomed to feeling there is no longer there. And it was powerful. Extraordinarily powerful. Shoot a firebolt into the air, Ooh. just to see like what happens. Is the chaos magic the still here? Or firebolt magic? goes off, strikes a flying seagull, which bursts into flame and falls down into the, into the <laughs> jungle somewhere, into the town, and sets the roof on fire. No, no, let's not go too far here. <laughs> <laughs> Although I guess it's good not to have a surprise fireball go off in my face. But that would have been kind of amusing, but no. no. <laughs> well. I would have occasionally taken the the lead wrapped ball out of the bag as well, just to see if there seemed to be anything happening to it, like okay. the lead melting away. And if it, if not, I just put it back in the bag. The lead is warm to the touch. Does it seem to be getting warmer? You've only checked there a couple of times while you're okay. here. You haven't taken it out the other rest of the time. Okay. Anything interesting happen with happen with the orb? Uh, the lead's a little warm, but uh, hopefully it'll last. Don't nope, touch it. We'll the lead. 
It's like no, it, no, it's back in the bag. Okay. I just take it out to check it, and then back in the bag. I'm not letting anybody get their hands on it. Right. Right. I have the ring of wisdom attuned again. Okay. Um, um, hopefully, within a couple of hours, we'll be home. Yes. Um, uh, I, when I get back to the camp, would have brought up that there seems to be something going on at Port Alta. Okay. Something good. So Everyone something would something. have wanted to help, but he's got to keep an eye on a half a dozen extremely exhausted people here, so yeah. he they are still asleep. asleep. And you can see that exhaustion is weighing heavily still on them. Yeah. Well, once it starts to get... With one exception. Mm -hmm. Captain Palana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was infected. Um, he seems to be twitchy, however, eager to move on. Yeah. Well, once the rest of them are awake, then I'll start trying to wake up the uh, the sleeping NPCs as well. Okay. Uh, Remember that thing you did at the Druid Moot? With the loud bangs, that will wake everybody up. Uh, yes. I'd rather not do that. <laughs> yeah, what, what's not? Here. How far into the jungle are you making your camp? Was it within sight of the water or out of sight of the water? I th well, I mean, yeah, I think it was probably close to the. It was probably at that village that we had found. The, okay. Like where the twelve fort circle of. was. Okay. Yeah, because that wasn't oh, too far from so staying the, among from the, the ruins that evening. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't too far from the trap, and it's fairly close. So I think it's like half an hour away from the the port. So. Right. Um, as you're waking them uh, wake, some of them wake up um, fairly quickly, but you can see redness around their eyes despite the fact that they're awake. A couple take a, a few yeah. more extra shakes to wake up. Uh, one of them wakes up and you can see that they've been crying, and they kind of look up at you with confusion and then look at the rest of them and then just sort of a settling, settling in of realization uh, very slowly. Um, Elzera, you hear the sound of a branch breaking off of the, the jungle, sort of towards the south, towards the direction of Port Alta. Um, I will point this out to, to uh, Amrun and keep an eye in that direction. Okay. Or actually, Clark, because if it's something physical coming through, Clark has a better chance of being. Okay. Of help. Is there any high ground nearby? It's pretty flat. Um, mostly what you have is the, the trees that have now overgrown in this area. The trees within what was the remains of this village are fairly small, but the ones around it are larger and kind of okay. form the canopy overhead. Uh, if available, Clark will try to make a go of climbing one of these larger trees at the edge, at okay. the southern edge of the settlement. Okay, make an athletics check for me. Sure. What is your bonus? Seven. Okay. You, uh, yeah, it's not difficult to shimmy up this these trees. They have the sort of banded bark that you find in tropical trees very often. So there's lots of good handholds okay. to, to shimmy up. Um, you see there's actually a bundle of coconuts hanging from this particular tree when you get up there. Not a lot of actual branches. Most of it kind of branches come out of the top, so you're kind of finding where the... the the tree bends a little bit and then making your perch right there. Yep, sure. He'll cut the coconuts down for, for people to enjoy and you keep an eye. dropping them down? Or yeah. Gonna, okay. He'll keep an eye south. Uh, and you see coming out of the tree something drops, but it seems like Clark is still in the tree. We've seen coconuts before at the oasis, right? You have, you have. But this is a strange place where things are making noise. Yep. Um, While everybody's getting ready, uh, I'm just going to pull out uh, Elwin's Guide to Demons, both useful and not. Okay. And flip through the pages to find that big ass demon we fought in the astral plane. Is he in there? Okay. Make a uh, make a roll. So it descri describes on the book, I believe, hmm? what the bonus is. Uh, let me find the book. Page. It's the first one I have on top, because of course. The book may be used when identifying a demonic species or even an individual demonic being, so it gives advantage. Okay. And that's an int check or uh, arcana? That would be a yes, an arcana check in this case. So not 20 plus 13, so 33. <laughs> okay. There he um, is. Open it on the right page. Well, you've been skimming this book before, so you've kind of had a decent idea 
of... Uh, it was so familiar to you, but you just couldn't put your finger on it. Mainly because it was swinging an axe at me. <laughs> well, it, it makes it a little more real <laughs> yeah. um, when, uh, when that happens. It's just the dead. Um, just have to remember it myself. Because, of course, I decided to put that sheet of paper away. <laughs> just as I needed it. Uh, by the way, anybody at home who's still thinking that uh, they may or may not want to use D&D Beyond, use D&D Beyond. I wish we were a paid sponsor. I don't care. I'll tell you how much I enjoy using it anyway. It's really, really I mean, that's what I use for all my animal stats, yeah. and cool. it's great. Um, you find an entry for mm-hmm. a creature called a Nykaloth. How do you spell that? N-Y-C-A-L-O-T-H. Brutal beings, uh, known to be fickle, um, but are often hired as enforcers by more powerful beings. Enforcers of contracts, occasionally the enforcers of uh, paying up the contract or suffering the consequences. So some sort of hired being, essentially, but definitely demonic in origin. Do I have time to search for Peturo? Because I found the first one so quickly. Um, It still takes you an hour to search through. So it's still basically while people are waking up. Wait till Clark returns here. Okay. So that was like the prep time in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'll just put the book away after that. Until I ruin my findings. Neat. Yeah. From your point in the tree, mm. you make three make out three figures moving through the woods, generally pretty stealthily. Okay. Um, Roughly, what size would they be? Like medium sized or larger? Um. Medium humanoid okay. sized, so yeah. five or six feet tall sometimes, okay. but maybe a little shorter than that. They seem to be moving uh, together, so okay. they're they're very much moving uh, as a group, um, stalking through the forest. But they seem to be moving kind of in a parallel direction to the town itself. It doesn't seem like they're moving to the town. Okay. From this distance, you can't really make out who they are. There's too much jungle cover, but you can easily see them moving along. Okay. Um, Make a perception check. Yeah, that'd be fine. Uh, Twenty-four. Okay. What you notice as well, which, judging by the way they're moving, they did not notice, was that perched in a tree over top of where they're going to be heading in about two minutes, Mm -hmm. is a panther-like creature, but its head seems to writhe. As if not made of a singular head. Hmm. Bad kitty. Uh, what do you see, Clark? Cl- well, Clark will look down and see if anyone's paying attention. Um, well, the rest of them seem to be getting people ready. Uh, um, I, I'm paying attention too. Okay. Yeah. okay. Clark will kind of whisper down uh, it's, a, it's three walkers mm-hmm. and some sort of cat. Snakes? I don't know. Big cat. When she does that, it's like that kind of fits. Clark will give a thumbs up. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, yeah, it puts They're you about to a minute away from an interceptor you. at this point. Hmm? They're about a minute away from an interceptor at this point. Uh, uh, if, I, if we want to intervene, we should go quickly. Uh, I'm going to climb up a tree. Okay. How far is it, are, are they from us? So we'll make an athletics check. Uh, can I assist if it's the same tree? Is it the same tree? Sure. Um, yeah, sure. Cool. So I'm gonna put there, arm there, grab Good. my hand. Good, because the first one's a two. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, slips at one point. And so that's an eight, er, out, 16. Grab onto the the uh, the edge of her jacket and kind of uh, hold her up. If possible, um, the perch is probably not big enough for two people, so Clark will try to switch positions, and he'll start climbing down. Okay. Okay. Because there's probably not it, enough tree there. It's, it's a it's a large tree, but the bend itself isn't very large. Mm-hmm. So there's mostly mostly uh, vertical elements. So there's kind of crook in the tree. Uh, you move aside as Elzara moves in. Um, based on and he'll point too. Yeah, based on what you've already seen and where you point, you can see them make them out pretty clearly. And can I uh, see the kitty cat? <laughs> uh, when Clark points it out, it's. It, it, it becomes immediately obvious. You're already kind of looking for it, and you've seen them before. Yeah. It's definitely another one of those creatures okay. lying in wait, and it seems to be poised and ready for them. It knows very well that they are there. Uh, how far are they from me? 
from you uh, about 200 feet at this point. Well, right. I'm going to take a regular shot at disadvantage okay. at on the cap. Them. Okay. All right. Uh, because it's outside of the first range by 50 feet. Oh, that's still a good uh, roll, though. Uh, that would be a total 20. Okay. That is a hit. The arrow goes flying on through, cutting through several leaves, because it gets all the way through, and strikes solid. And it takes six non-magical piercing okay. damage. Um, there's a low growl as it kind of hisses and looks in your direction, apparently not really noticing. Um, and again, it is the main head moving, and then you see all the smaller little eyes also looking mostly in your direction, although some of them still looking back at the at the uh, others. Uh, you do notice them flinch as well as something that's struck in front of them. Yeah. And it turns and bolts off into the forest, into the jungle. Who's there? Someone calls off in your direction. I'm going to yell, I just saved your life. You hear some whispering. Thanks, but still, who's there? Just some people passing through. You? We're just looking for some plants. We were given a list. Can we come closer? Sure. Where are you? And uh, you can see that they're kind of looking off into the jungle, but they haven't really... They're looking more at eye level, and you guys yeah. are both up in the tree. Uh, I will... Clark. You guys can now hear the shouting going on. Clark will descend. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and he'll point a direction for these fine folks. Okay. Uh, I'll, using druid craft, do something to try to fill my location. Okay. Like, um, m yeah. Just like in move. particular? Make leaves dance. Mm -hmm. Make leaves dance and, okay. like. <laughs> it's like a moving marquee of leaves kind of dancing around you to show your spot. Uh, is that you? Yep. All right. We're a there's large a, group. There's a hesitation, and then you do hear slight movement. They, they are moving stealthily. They do so, seem to normally work fairly well in, the, in this area. They seem to be comfortable with it. And after a few, a few minutes, actually less than that. Yeah, um, and I'll keep an eye on them. Like As they come closer, you can see that it is three, uh, looks like uh, three humans. Mm -hmm. uh, the one in the lead looks to be about a mid-20s, mm -hmm. uh, fairly lithe, uh, dressed in very simple clothing mm -hmm. uh, with a large satchel on his hip. Uh, the two behind uh, appear to be a bit, quite a bit older. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see graying at the temples. They also have similar sort of very rough sacks that they're carrying. Uh, when they get about 50 feet, I'll climb down. Okay. You see the, the them start a little bit, and they are carrying small daggers that they kind of pull out. Um, more because they were just startled anyway, uh, as they approach uh, closer. Hello? Hi. Oh, there you are. Uh, it's the young man in the lead who's speaking. Thank uh, yeah. you. Uh, there was a weird cat with snakes around its head that, that would oh, put really? you to sleep and eat you. They don't normally go this far out. I, yeah. Didn't expect to see one of those. I thought you said it was safe, says the one behind. I mean, it's the jungle. It's mostly safe? Right. This is did, a terrible um, way to make some coin. Flowers. Clark will yell out, free your hands, please. Did Abatros send you, send you to the jungle? Oh, you know him then. Yeah, yeah. I was collecting some stuff for him. He's always in need of people stupid or smart enough to head out here. Uh, and you can see them putting away their, their weapons. Um, we don't mean you any harm. We didn't even yeah. know you were here. Yeah. We're, we're just keeping an eye on the camp, so we, we noticed you. Oh, you all camped here? And he kind of walks a bit closer in. Yeah, I've camped here a few times myself. It's kind of creepy at night sometimes. Yeah. So you can we're, hear we're the used stones to it. moving, but... So... Uh, my name's uh, uh, Four. Four? Yes. Short. Short for Forrest. I never liked that part. 
We have visitors. Mm. Oh, how many of you are there? Uh, or, there's a... Uh, did you crash on the island somewhere? No. Yes. I, I had motioned to keep the others quiet. Just okay. people who were kind of. Up. They're not being particularly stealthy, but they're kind of yeah. nervously sitting there. So, can I insight check this guy? Sure. Like, was he really sent by buddy? Um, that is a 16. 16? Uh, he seems to be sincere. He's mm -hmm. definitely surprised to see this many people, and he's very wary, mm -hmm. uh, because you expect that he did not expect to see anybody here. Um, but he seems to be good-natured about it. Um, Do you know what's going on in town? In town? I mean, in general or, or today? In the general, large ship that, that's, that was there yesterday. Right, yeah. Uh, the Rose Revenge just flew, came in. Um, I hadn't seen it before, but I kind of only got onto the island a few years ago myself. And apparently it makes dock here every once in a while. Sorry, the Rose Revenge? Yeah, yeah. Big looking ship. I wouldn't want to go up against it. Yeah, it looked, uh... Although if they're hiring, I might just, I might just pop on. Uh, the island's okay for a while, but the company's not great. And the old, one of the old guys from behind is like, hey! I heard that. See what I mean? So, okay. So, not, it, they're not there for trouble. Uh, well, I mean, Port Alta isn't exactly the most well-established of places. I imagine that they're coming here is because they need to. I understand there's a lot of work going on right now, though. Uh, they're looking for supplies, so folks like ourselves are getting what's needed by, uh, by the... The, the potion maker, and also starting to get some wood, other things like that. Okay. So. But where are you folks coming from? Um, I don't remember seeing you around town all that much. And yeah, we came from the other side. The other side of the island? Yeah. <laughs> You're joking. Nobody comes from the other side of the island. Uh, they say it's cursed. I think it's just dangerous. Oh, yeah, it's cursed. Are you, are you being serious, or... or is the hum is kind of that, that's how I'm playing it. Uh, he kind of laughs at first and sees the, the look on your face. Okay, well, th that's good to know. Oh, how far in does the curse extend? Uh, whatever, like four miles, four or five miles, right? Uh, like it's, yeah, there's like an, a, another mile before you hit the kind of the easy yeah. barrier of the hum. Oh. Okay. Well, I've never gone that far in. Too many of those, uh, what do they call them? Comedians, I think they call them. Too many of those things. Wild boars. Nasty monkeys. Got away from them once. That was not fun. Yeah, they hurt. And the little guys. The green guys. The sticky ones. I lost a whole group to them once. Yeah. Those were interesting. So, you just kind of wandered across the other side of the island? You don't really look much like a crew. We're not. We ended up there. How far away are they from us? Is this while I'm reading? Do this I is on the edge of the town because he came into the clearing, so he's kind of been looking around. So you can see him from where you are, and he can easily see you as well. Yeah, I mean, can we hear anything in the conversation? Or oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he's, okay. he's not making an effort to be quiet. You've, if anything, having kind of come in here, he, he's nervously talking, um, yeah. kind of almost speaking louder. Um, you can see the two people behind him are kind of looking impatient. Yeah. Hey, we just came in over there. Where are you pointing at? Whatever Amron thinks is the direction to the trap portal thing. Okay. Do um, I, yeah, I'll, I'll hear, I hear him say that, right? Mm -hmm. And, and is, is this all taking place after I'm done consulting the yeah. broker? Okay. Yeah. Is he correct in pointing? I mean, roughly. It's the opposite direction from the interior of the island, mm -hmm. where she just said you came from. Mm -hmm. Um, you guys I, would hear what I'm saying, do you? Yeah. yeah. I, there's nothing, like, that's more or less back to Port Alta. Yeah, it's a long story. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. We've been doing a lot of walk in the past couple of days. You've been walking in circles then? Basically. Yes. So what? Ah, uh, that happens. Why? Unless you know the landmarks, it's kind of hard to get around, and even then, I swear some of the landmarks change. It's like the vines just grow over anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mines do that. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, if you need your way back to Port Alta, I can show you a way which isn't in a circle. Um, I thought we were going to find more of those damn leaves. My fingers are already going black from the last ones we found. What are and you guys looking his, for? A bit, of, a bit of black stain on his hands. What do you? What did he send you guys for? Um. I, I might be able to help. Violet flower. What did he call it? Adama, Dem, Adarna. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, that's what he needed most of. But he said to keep an eye out for uh, any of the jalap, mm -hmm. some bloodroot. Although that one I don't really like getting too close to. Yeah. They say that there's some king blossom out here, but I've never seen it. it doesn't grow very well, I don't think here. It's too yeah. warm. Give it me ten minutes, warm. and I'll help you. Oh, I, I wouldn't want to put you out. Oh, yes, no. you would. Okay. If, if you give me 11 minutes, I can help you out and tell you exactly where there is some. That'd be a, a real big help. Thanks. Uh, what's your name again? Elzara. Oh, nice to meet you, Elzara. I have a shake. Okay. Um, little guys in the back. What's a minute? <laughs> no. Ah, uh, time is known. Yeah. Whether you have a timepiece or not. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I sit down and commune with nature as a ritual. What's she doing? I don't know. Magic. Um, Magic? Um, yes. I don't know if I trust that stuff. Well, you can see the results for yourself once she's done. Uh, maybe. You're welcome to go back to Port Alta right now. I mean, I, I said I'd help you find stuff, but you're not obligated. I'm not walking back through that crap by myself. I'm just saying. Yep. Uh, and I'll search specifically for uh, the three flowers that I've already found and any king root. Okay. King blossom? Or, yeah, king blossom. So you're looking for uh, Jala Pardana and king blossom? As well uh, as? And blood root. Blood root? Yeah. Okay. So three of them I know and have found. King Blossom, I don't know in particular, but I would ask for a description of it. Okay. Um, he describes it as this sort of very large flower that's got this really rich blue with um, white stripes. Um, the kind of thing I guess a king would wear. Cool. Um, uh, and I would do that any What's the range on that? It's like three miles. Okay. So, um, I'm just gonna go double check what the three things I can ask are. Uh, I would do probably fiends, uh, plants, and animal or. You do, 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 do. Sorry. Finds plants. Two twenty-four. see if there's any extra breakfast. Um, uh, if there's any interest in breakfast. Any extra breakfast. Did anybody make breakfast? I'm not sure. I don't think so. All right. Um. So breakfast yeah. has been made. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Uh, I get any prevalent plants, minerals, animals, or people as one thing. Uh, powerful celestial fiends, fey, elementals, or undead as the second, and uh, mm, influence from other planes okay. is what I'm going to do. I've, I have a general feel. I've done it from here in the first place. Mm -hmm. so. um, you do uh, note a stand of bloodroot mm -hmm. about... Uh, 500 feet further in. Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of sense its presence of, a, of the almost, in a way, malevolent to most people. Understanding a little bit more about nature, you understand it's more just a parasitic relationship it has with the plant, that it grows around a tree and slowly starts to draw all of the 
the moisture and all of the, the uh, nutrients out of the tree as it grows. Mm -hmm. um, so you detect that. Uh, jalap, you actually detect inside this area. Uh, some of the ruins have some of the, some jalap growing up around the rocks. Mm -hmm. uh, you do note a, uh, a single king blossom uh, about half a mile away. Um, and that is kind of skirting the edge of the hum. And now, perhaps because you've been inside the hum, you can actually detect the edges of it as well. You don't get any clear image, uh, idea or understanding of what's inside the hum, but now you can kind of make out the area of it. And you get the impression that anything you would have detected from it before was actually displaced. Um, it is a barrier which seems to both protect and deflect magical scrying of any kind. Uh, and and fact, that would align with what we right, know. Right, um, It does itself have a sense of otherworldly presence. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is though the, the, the power, the magical radiation does extend from an entirely different plane of existence. It is both natural and unnatural at the same time. And the things within have managed to transform themselves to be adapted to it. Uh, and no violet, or no Adarno? Uh, not within that range, no. Cool. Um, I will share this information. Okay. Uh, Four is, uh, kind of surprised. To, so. I, that was a neat trick. Uh, can you teach me how to do that? It's a lot of practice and training. And time. Well, I got one of those three. Is that enough? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of uh, an all or nothing. <laughs> Figures. Clark will take a little bit of the breakfast and some of his rations, like a snack portion, and hand out three doses. To? To the guests. To them? Okay. Yeah. So I guess we'll have breakfast also while this is um, going on. Four looks surprised and accepts it from you. Um, the, one of the old guys kind of looks at it what is the actual form of breakfast? Some of it's jerky. Mm hmm. Also, uh, maybe some scrambled eggs. Uh, a bit of what bread, are you actually putting these in? Because you don't have plates or anything like that. Hopefully, people have mess kits. I have one. Uh, I well, have one. okay. Then you're spreading out your mess kits among them. Yep. Um, the old guy who's been complaining this entire time takes the you know, sort of plate from me. What the hell is this? It looks like it was an egg once. And he starts to I make it one. taste better. <laughs> uh, he's kind of had some before he had a chance to do that. It's like, this tastes terrible. Who cooked this? Uh, give it another bite. It's not that bad. Uh, four uh, takes a bite of the jerky. Hey, this is not bad. It's a little salty, but... You got any water? Um, if we have a container, then yes. Clark, Clark will pull out his wine bottle. Okay. And offer... Uh, sips off of that. It's a bit rich for this early in the morning, but I'm not going to say no. <laughs> it's mostly water. Well, Desi takes a sip and goes, oh, well, it's got an aftertaste, I'll give it that. Ends up back to you. The old guy takes another bite skeptically of the egg. Eh, okay, it's a bit better. Could use some salt. Um, just dip the, uh, just dip the, the, the beef stick in it, you'll be fine. It starts to swirl the eggs with the beef, beef stick. Yeah, this isn't so bad. Um. The other one's been quiet this entire time, just sort of looking around just suspiciously. So, uh, and I will, uh, if you can give me a moment, I'm just going to go talk to the rest of my group and figure out what we're doing. Um, but we should probably get going. I mean, yeah, it, it would just be, be a minute just to see if we're going back that way or not. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I can't leave these two out here on their own. Yeah, but of course If not. you can pay, we can probably lead you back in easily, or it's not too far. Yeah. So, and I know the direction right now because I just mm -hmm. felt all of the yeah. people there. Well, and we've traveled there and from here before. Exactly. Yeah. You do know that wild animals do cross those paths, and you haven't actually scoped out the animals. You didn't detect anything particularly. Uh, yeah. You would have detected the Kamaden as it was going away. Yeah. In fact, you detected four of them. So I probably went back to a, a, can, a cave again. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, are we going to be going to the town or not? They seem um, to be fine. I was talk- talking to them. Yeah. Well, you had to return uh, turn in those flowers, didn't you? Yes, I, uh, I have to do that. But I wanted to talk to the sheriff for a minute. Yeah. Sounds like town. Uh, mm-hmm. Other than that, I think the only thing is, I think we should look at that trap around the... Yeah. The thing is, I'm pretty sure that uh, the green lady put that in. Probably. Uh, if we could get rid of it, it would make travel here safer. Yeah. Um, are we taking everybody with us? And I put, I like head nudged to everybody else. Back to the tour? To the group um, <laughs> of people that we've saved. Well. What's well, the plan for them? Because they're your pet they, project. <laughs> yeah, I, I asked them. Do any of you want to go back to the port, or do you uh, do any of you want to continue on with us to Vator? There are a lot of confused looks. There will be problems with uh, Adrian, just FYI, if we all just uh, appear in the middle of the library. He's, he's, uh, he's used to me bringing in new people. <laughs> it doesn't mean it makes him happy. That's okay. In fact, it makes him the opposite of happy. He says, these guys are way less scary than she was. Clark's going to keep an eye on the quiet one. Okay. Um, Make an inside check. Sure. Seven. Okay. Looks generally nervous, looking around, looking at all of you, the very well-armed, very strange group that seems to appear out of nowhere. Does kind of look over and sees this group of, of... uh, essentially, uh, almost refugees, refugees with almost yeah. nothing that they're you know their t- tattered clothing and worn looks on them, right. um, and they very clearly look rough, and they seem to be very timid, and there's definitely demands being made of them that they don't necessarily understand, and you realize he's kind of thinking you just gathered a whole lot of slaves. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna address that. Um, Polana kind of speaks up. I, I mean, I guess we didn't really know where we were going to be going. We just assumed you had a ship somewhere. No, we'll be magically transported back to the island we came from. You can see there's a, a lot of nervousness when you describe that particular feat. It's reliable and seems to be uh, safe, but... Uh, uh, there's no, if, in our experience, it's not a lot of reliable about anything on this island. No. There is Although, a ship nearby which apparently may be looking for workers. Yeah, yeah I mean, like it's, I you may say. be able to find something in, in the port. Uh, uh, I see the quiet one kind of move over and whisper into uh, Four's ear. Four looks a little bit surprised at what he seems to have heard. Uh, do I perceive this at all? No, because he's specifically watching them, yep. or you're talking to them. Um... So, I mean, anyone who wants to go to the port, uh, we will be heading there in a bit. Uh, we can guide you back. Uh, I can give you some funds out of, uh, out of my own to help you get by for a while, but we won't be staying here. Uh, we'll be going to an island that is significantly less hot and less wet less and smelly. less jungly. Um, they seem to be looking to Polana for guidance, mm-hmm. um, and you can see them kind of almost huddling together a little bit nervously. Um, I don't think that any of us want to spend much time in Port Alta. Most of us came through Port Alta at one point, and it wasn't very pleasant then. Uh, I don't know how you're going to get to where you said you're going to go, but if we can go that way, I think we'd rather... I don't think sure. we can take everybody, can we? Technically, if they're moving fast enough, I mean, we can get probably eight or ten. It would be dangerous. Um, it's just a matter of everyone having to move through uh, before uh, the portal closes. Um, you can see that he's tugging now at, uh, at Four's uh, arm, mm-hmm. almost insisting to get back in the jungle while you guys aren't looking. He doesn't seem to have noticed that you're watching them, uh, and Four just sort of and you can see an increasing worry passing across Four's look as the guy points over very clearly now towards the the uh, the extras you brought with you. And the extras that we are feeding and talking mm-hmm. to calmly. But who look, from his perspective, mm-hmm. looking at the other guy's perspective, 
who look like a bunch of people that you're barely feeding uh, rations to who look like they have been suffering for quite mm -hmm. some time. I just wait for them to make a decision. Okay. Um, I do say we, we will be going into the port, so anyone who wants to come with us can. But uh, if people, anyone wants to stay, they can or go with us back to Vitor. Vitor? I've heard about that island. You can't sail there. No. Well, we're traveling by magical means. Mm hmm. Right. Well, at the very least, I don't think any of us wants to spend too much time in this jungle, so. When we get back to Port Alta, I can give you a more firm answer. I know for myself, I'd rather go back to Vatour, or go to Vatour. I've never been there before. Sure. Um, we're just uh, we're just gonna go now. Says four in the background. Okay. Don't want to bother you any longer. Nice uh, to meet you. Yeah. Safe travels. The uh, nervous we one is kind of already practically in the jungle as as four turns the rest of them. We we should be able to. Clark's gonna go up. Okay. Climb the tree again. Same tree? Yeah. Okay. We should be able to, to find our way to town fairly easily. Good. It's really only about half a mile that way, and he kind of gestures vaguely in the direction of what you remember. Um, Just be safe, and uh, thanks again for saving us, as he kind of runs to catch up to the one who's kind of been running ahead of it now into the jungle. What's that about? Clark's going to keep an eye on the group as far as he can. Okay. Uh, you can see they're arguing a little bit. Uh, looks like uh, four in particular is arguing with the nervous one. The other one's just sort of Cranky. still <laughs> still finishing his meal. Right. He took the remainder of the mess kit with him. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. At least it's cheap to replace. Yeah. Um, as they go wandering off and kind of heading off, um, not in the same direction they were traveling, but not back towards Port Alta, kind of splitting the difference a little bit. Kind of in the direction of where the King Blossom was said to be. Um, and then they're lost in the jungle from your sight fairly quickly. Uh, so do we all want to go to the port? Or do we want to, like, do we want to leave you and some people to look at the trap to see what we can figure out? Well, Are like, we splitting the party? <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you guys. I, I mean, mean I need to drop off those flowers. Um, the yeah. town is noisy and disgusting, but so is the jungle. Sure. I mean, yeah, we can all go at once if if uh, yeah, if, we all remain if, if we want to check this out and then go to Port Alta and then teleport from there. Yeah. Yeah, we can go either way. Or we, instead of going there, coming back. Mm, yeah. If we leave these people here; they're gonna die or be uh, captured. Well, when we leave them alone, we've got Iroh and Paul and Zach is... Okay. Mm, that's what but, I'm saying. Like, but if, if we, we all, yeah, if we all stay together and just go check that out and then head in town, yeah. Yeah. If, if we all check out this trap that you guys really want to get rid of, then go to town, then nobody needs to separate. And Paul and Iroh are engaged in kind of fighterly calisthenics. Mm -hmm. uh, just doing some sort of mock swings at each other. Nothing particularly vicious at the moment. All these push-ups with Iro and his back. Uh, mm -hmm. no, it's not that strong. Um, if anything, it's probably the other way around. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but just kind of stretching out for the day, Paul seems to be getting ready for a fight. You can see him trying to sh uh, shrug off the exhaustion he still seems to feel. Uh, Iro seems to be much better off. Um, Shank is very carefully sharpening uh, the, uh, I think it was the Warhammer's picks. picks. Sorry, sorry, War Picks, I should say. Mm -hmm. Can't sharpen a Warhammer. Uh, <laughs> but, you can uh, try. <laughs> but uh, kind of got a special little tool just to make the edge of and the point of the War Pick even more sharp. Mm -hmm. It leaves a little sparks as she grinds into it. So, we decided to. We'll check out the trap first. Okay. Well, we can it's just, tell just on the other side of the of the ruins. Sorry. We can just tell Emerald about it, and he can deal with it himself. To be completely honest, I don't think Emerald's long for this world. Based on how he looked last time, and he keeps getting worse. I think he's dying. He'll recover. He hasn't yet. And the I'll the temple there is pretty mm -hmm. good. We live a long time, but we're not immortal. 
Yes. And he's lived way past what any elf normally lives. He's, he's immortal. I'm sure humans have a way around it. Anyway, we can all go to the trap. At least it's not the city, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Um, one thing is just if she had... Uh, I sent a message to her and she said that she was... Well, one, uh, she was happy with our progress against the undead lizard thing. Emran doesn't know dinosaurs from her hold around. I've seen a live one because dude in a queen polymorphed as one. Mm -hmm. mm. So I I'd say what it was. Yeah. Me too, because I read um, about it in the book. So I guess we proved we were tough enough to take one of those out. I don't know what was stopping her from entering the area, but she said that she's currently involved somewhere else. So if she was the one to put the trap there and the, the plants regrowing kind of suggests that mm. then perhaps either the trap is gone or it's been weakened and we can get rid of it um, at least it would save any people who were like hey let's go travel to that island yeah. oh wait what <laughs> I don't speak infernal um, okay so you head over to the other side of the, of the, the ruins which you've been making your camp in for the mm. evening approach where you had seen the uh, on the outside what looked to be just a stone box essentially which you know leads into uh, what could be considered a basement if there was a building there mm. whatever building there might have been has been long long since gone mm -hmm. uh, which you know has the teleportation circle inside uh, do any of you have none of your dwarves Shank has a possibility of understanding well, it. Well, Shank's a dwarf, but specifically didn't have the That's stone That's right, it doesn't have stone cutting. Clark, so. Clark's familiar with dwarven script, but not necessarily a dwarven application of it. Okay. Zykus also knows dwarven script and read about architecture in books, because history. <laughs> I'll let you to make a history roll. All right. Uh, a disadvantage oh. because it's not specifically history. 19 and 11, so... Non-natural non 20. Okay. As you walk back to the area, something you had kind of noticed a little bit as you came out before, which stands out particularly strongly now, uh, and this isn't a dwarven settlement, so that's why it also yeah. doesn't really apply, but uh, stone cutting is a dwarven trait, um, is that this does seem to be newer construction, if you will. It's less old of a ruin than all the other ruins that are around here, uh, which means long after the village itself had been destroyed from whatever, for whatever reason, that was added on top. Okay. It is closed, once again, and because you had come out of it is the only reason you would actually even think that it would open. I'll let them know that it seems to be newer construction based on this, this, and that marking. I read about that in, like, some citation. <laughs> and I will sass him that we already knew this. <laughs> you knew a little bit about it, but but this specifically points it out that this is it was deliberately built later. Yeah. Um, again, I'll ritually uh, detect magic. Okay. Uh, and then take a look at it. So you guys stand around for ten minutes while he. Clark will take a bit of a watch while that happens. Then I'll just look around, try to see if I can figure out a way to make it open from the outside. Sheets. Ah, way too many sheets. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're taking a watch? Yeah, just to kind of keep an eye on the perimeter. Um, Iro and Paul kind of take up similar stances around there. Um, Shank looks at this box and wonders why the hell everybody's so interested in it. Uh, seemingly having kind of forgotten. I mean, like, if we were to come back through, we know how to get up out of it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, is if we have someone who has Mage Hand, so if he's with us, we could. I mean, he's also the only one of us who can teleport. Yeah. He hasn't studied the circle, but... Well, someone can bring you to the circle and not, a, not go through. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. a cast teleportation circle, and you can yeah. walk through and they yeah. But yeah. that's the other This would give him the chance to study yeah. the circle. And yeah. Clued into that after yeah, I said it. Um, um, combination of abjuration and transmutation are the primary things mm. you, you recall from this. There's a small amount of evocation magic as well, 
not centered on anything in particular. It all seems to be mixing in this strange aura as you stare at the stones. Okay. I'll uh, mention that. I mean, it's uh, a, probably abjuration and transmutation are to uh, control the stones. That's what's making it so I couldn't even mark on them. I'll uh, ask probably that. I'll ask Elzera. Are there any new footsteps that would have been here in the last few days? Like, I'm thinking specifically of that dragonborn that I spoke with, that I kind of like indicated the rough area where this was. Okay. Can I make its arrival? Sure. I'll point out, look for dragonborn uh, footsteps. There was a discussion that I had with somebody. Fourteen. Fourteen. The growth here is pretty thick, and you guys have already been tromping around this area. So it's almost impossible to see any kind of footsteps here. I don't know, you should have mentioned that before. I did. I thought I did. Yes, I said we, yeah. we may have found a guide, and you verbally... No. <laughs> before we started trampling all over the place. I can't look for stuff that's hidden by our own footprints. <laughs> what, about right in front, what about right in front of the door? So I'll look right in front of the door. <laughs> okay. You can make a survival check if you have a train. I don't. You so don't you damage. do have it? Hmm? Wasn't you, that the joke no, for the longest sure time? You, no, I didn't. Survival? Was, wasn't it nature that he had trained? No, that was... No, that you had survival. Oh, it was survival. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Does that mean it's an advantage? Uh, no, it's no, that, it's that no, you can no, make no, the no, roll. Because no, no, yeah, yeah. there was a 20 in there. 18 plus... Okay. Right, I read about survival because I'd be going out in the wilderness, so 23. <laughs> Um, right next to the door, I'll like kneel down and look. It's like that. That looks weird. Okay. Yeah, you're you're sent. You're seeing a little bit of marking on the outside. Even as you watch, you can see that there are vines and lichen kind of growing and filling in the spot that was there. But there doesn't look it looked to be uh, some marks on the bottom, as though someone was trying to lever this or or otherwise you know, scuff at it. Okay. You don't, still don't really see anything for footprints, mind you, because the same problem as before. Gotcha. Um, look, right. There, that pebble at that orientation. So somebody was trying to open this. I am going to try and clear the plants off of it. Uh, okay. Overgrowth, because I remember before they grew back pretty quickly. How are you clearing? Them? Hmm. Yeah, sacred flame sounds about <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Um, roll. Uh, Actually, first he'll try just pulling them off, but he's only got a strength of ten. So after a bit, he'll get frustrated and start blasting. Uh, make a, a constitution saving throw. Oh yes, all the dice out. Useful things to have when playing D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. That's an eight. An eight. As you pull your hands uh, around these vines and start to tug them away, you notice a little bit of uh, uh, small uh, thorns on the inside. And you pull your hands away and uh, note the little green uh, residue that's behind. Uh -oh. oh dear. Uh -oh. You take four <laughs> points of poison damage and you're poisoned. No. <laughs> okay. I will, uh, one and a little two, I'll cure poison on myself. I'll keep watching the perimeter. <laughs> okay. Production like poison. How is the box made? Is it just like some random square box sticking out of the location, or? Uh, it only it sits a little bit off of the ground, but imagine a storm cellar with no building. It's okay, so just like a so it's, got a, it's got a slanted roof, as you recall, when from the inside it kind of, kind of moved, out, actually, kind like of moved upward. Um, uh, with sort of, yeah, a rectangular box. That's like slightly uh, angled. That's slightly yeah. angled on the top, yeah. <laughs> so the, the topmost part at the back, the highest part, is really only about a foot and a half off the ground, so most of it's underground. Gotcha. Um, using a knife to push away, it, is the po does the poison seem to be coming from the plants, or the poison was coated, coated behind no, the plants? No, it, it looks as though the plants themselves are poisonous. Okay, um, and looking at that, you're you're kind of thinking, well, these could have randomly grown here, but they may have also been deliberately placed. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, sacred flaming little clusters of it. I'm trying to brush the rest away. Okay. I want uh, primarily. I'm looking to see if it starts to grow back unnaturally fast again. Um, as the as the eruption of sacred flame goes off, you hear gasps from the group of people you brought with you who are quite surprised to see this display uh, and they seem to be moving further back uh, not exactly understanding why you're assaulting the stone um, I'll, I'll take a scimitar to it and try to haul like cut okay. some away 
What kind of damage is Sacred Flame? Radiant. Radiant? Okay. Um, the, Non-magical slashing. <laughs> the um, damage seems to uh, push away at them, but you do see that they are aggressive. So mm. even while you're watching, they start to, to crawl back a bit. Um, every time you cut through, it seems to cut through and almost seal immediately. Cool. Hmm. Mm. What items do I have on so, here? Uh, do the plants seem magical or just poisonous? The plants don't seem exactly magical. The, the question is, if you looked at a magical being, would it show a magical mm. or is it just a being? Uh, and from their point of view, it's a natural thing. Mm -hmm. um, they have a very strong sap that seems to, to reconnect very easily. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, basically, it just it doesn't seem to be a spell animating them no, or something. No, it does not seem to be. Um, huh. Hmm. Are the plants moving by themselves at all, or is it just quickly resealing when she tries to cut through it? Like, if I, when I'm prying some of them away, mm -hmm. are they pulling back and... Not as such. They seem to have a very quick and responsive growing cycle. So when you pull some back, then the vines start to seem to extend and grow out in that direction. Is this all one... Uh, does it look like one big plant or bush, or does it seem to be a check. bunch of them? Could I make one at advantage because of my uh, previous commune with nature, because this would have been within the range? Sure. So do these are vines like covering these levels. I mean, you didn't pick up every yeah. plant that was in the area because you would have been overwhelmed. Yeah. And this one was not really something of that you were looking for. Yeah. But, but you get but a general the idea of that. residual knowledge, I would say. I got an 11. 11. That's why I'm asking for a roll for it. Mm -hmm. So that's a natural 19. Okay. Plus 7, so 26. You're having a hard time picking out where it starts and ends. Yeah. Uh, because it's just a twisting collection of vines. He's not a naturalist. Uh. And at some point, it seems like it digs into the ground and it kind of pops up elsewhere, and you're having a hard time following it all. Um, you you kind of think back on your experience, and a lot of the growth here does grow together, mm -hmm. um, but this does seem to be one plant. Seems to be all one thing. Yeah, it's rooted wow. several times, but it is one singular organism. You're really good at killing plants. Yeah, I don't have that <laughs> spell prepared. Oh. I'll cast an essence splash at it, like on top of the slab. Okay. What's the damage of Ash Splash? Hmm? Uh, two separate d6s, because yeah. it's a two target yeah. spell. So it's 1d6 and then 1d6 to a nearby target if there is one. Okay. First target. Roll to hit. All right. Let's see. Yeah, I think I am. Not 20 to hit. Okay. <laughs> so double damage, because you find an find a edge towards the root. Six. Mm -hmm. Six damage. Six damage for the first one, because I rolled. Oh, you rolled the die, okay. Yeah. okay. And for the second one, six. Well, if there's a second or twelve. target. Yeah, there is. Okay. Is it's, it like all, it's all one entity. It's, it's one plant. It's one entity, yeah. Yep. yeah. Acid splash is you splash it on something, and the thing's standing next to it. Yeah. But there's only one thing. Okay. It's all one creature. Chris is. Yeah. Uh, uh, but how effective is the acid? Uh, the acid splash seems to be very effective, actually. As you mm. can see, the vines start to hiss and, and uh, from the, the burning of the acid and do not regrow in those sections. Good. Uh, yeah. But you do kind of feel that you, that you had to have hit the right spot. Mm. Uh, otherwise, you would have probably been trying to damage the stone more than anything else. So cool. is it gone from most of the slab or some of the slab? Oh, just a small section. Okay. Yeah, it'll just take a while feet. to clear it. How large is it? Like ten feet or twenty? Uh, the doorway itself is about ten feet wide okay. and about six feet of the of the angle. You know that the the basement that's inside is much larger than that. Mm. I mean, I think if we're going to clear this, we'll, we'd have to get rid of this plant because it'll just grow back over over time. Yeah. I have an idea for maybe getting through this. Stone part. Well, I'll go find Clark. Hey, uh, you've dealt with uh, traps and intricate mechanism mechanisms before, correct? Yeah. Do you have any idea how this works, or have you seen anything, anything similar before? Take a look. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll let the other two guards know that I'm taking time off. They just sort of nod at you. Yeah. I'll go take a look. I'm ray of frosting things while 
they're talking. Okay. Uh, it seems to regrow slower. Okay. With the ray of frost, when well, it's regrowing. Mm -hmm. um, now, Clark's been in this thing. Yep. And out the other end, so mm -hmm. we should know roughly where the seam is and maybe where the edges or that sort of thing. Pretty good idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll have a peek around. Okay. It's quite obscured by the vines that are there. Okay. Um, but between the two yeah. of them, with the acid splash and the cold, they start to kind of clear away an area. Okay. Uh, and you can kind of make out the seam. Okay. Um, it's not a, a it's, an, it's an invisible hinge, yeah. essentially, from the inside. Right. Um, what are you intending to do? Uh, just kind of get a feel for the, me the, the mechanism of the door, how okay. it opens, how it closes, if it locks, how it locks, that sort of thing. Okay. As far as mundane eyes can see. Um, I'll assist them with whatever he does. Are you trained in thieves tools? No. I mean, like, with providing hints of things. If, if there's anything magical, I guess. Um, well, he's already described some of the magic okay. that's there. Uh, abjuration. Uh, evocation. Small amount of evocation and transmutation. Um, yeah, with uh, Thieves' Tools roll. Okay. Uh, kind of poke and prod around with uh, the extra hinges. Somebody tried lifting over there. Mm. 20, unnatural. Mm. Okay. There's a very, very slim line that looks like just another line of the... the stone that's across it, mm -hmm. um, but you know if you could get your, if, if it was open, you could jam it and jam it open there at okay. that point. Uh, but it's not, it's not, it's all hooked at the other side. Right. And there's some mechanism on the inside which holds it closed. Clark will look around for a boulder or a good sized stump. Okay. How big? Beach ball sized or smaller. Okay. Uh, there's lots of stone laying here from the ruins that are around you. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Roll something over close to the to the scene. Okay. If you get around to opening this thing, mm -hmm. I, I don't have the I don't have the key, but if you if you place something here when it's open, you, you can block it open. Assuming it doesn't shear rock in half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, will do. If it does, I'd be very careful coming and going. Yeah. Um, we know how to open it, in any case. From the inside, I mean. Um, you do realize this thing's a coffin, right? Yes. Okay. I'm hoping to use the stone shaping spell to put a different door in it. One that is not so hard to open. Um, well... Is it obvious that mortal hands did not make this thing, just by the shape of it? Um, not really. In fact, if you had to guess, you'd say that they made an effort to make it look like it was made by okay. normal hands to not stand out among the ruins that are here. Okay. Uh, make an uh, make an insight check. Sure. Seventeen. Seventeen. The design of this mm -hmm. and everything that's around it meant that. They wanted this to be hidden and never found. Right. They left a way on the inside to get out, which means that some people knew that the circle was there and right. wanted to be able to escape, uh, wanted to be able to get out free. Uh, that did require some magical knowledge. Mm. So, this is hidden. Yeah. There's so that no one else will they find didn't it want, and learn from they it. They didn't want the local natives to futz with it. Something like that. Yeah. It was hidden on purpose. Yeah, so I'll mm. Clark will relate that, but it, it's that's pretty much known at this point anyway. Mm. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, hopefully, uh, our large group of friends remembers nothing about it being here, or not enough for it to be discovered again. Well, again, I'm wondering who made it. I was starting to assume that the Green Goddess had, but she could likely make it like that. She wouldn't have to use human means. Uh, if it's not her. If someone had to make it, then... I think it's a crazy person. Yeah. It would probably be one of Emerald's enemies. Mm -hmm. Because Emerald didn't know about it. What? I thought you said he was forgetful. He is. He's an old guy, but... I mean, it, he'd, sent a num he'd sent a number of groups here, and when they stopped coming back, that was... I mean, that's kind of why we're going in. Um... I suspect that the dead people we found in there were some of the groups that he sent in, but... If he knew um, about it, he would have warned us about it. Yeah. 
At the very least, he would have sent a wizard there who could have mage-handed it and opened the thing. Um, Did I hear one of you say that this this coffin, for lack of a better term, is newer than the ruins? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas the the circle is older than the ruins, isn't it? Um, it's it's like hard a, to say from this distance. Well, I think like it was. I think Emerald had a bit like eight hundred or a thousand years ago yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, whereas I th think it had been said that the ta the the ruins of the town were near, were more recent. Yeah. Maybe they coexisted. Um, I don't know about your wizard friend, but if it was me and I had the ability to make a door that only I can go through, I would trap the hell out of it. Yeah. And right. if I was old and long in the tooth and forgetful, I might not mention it to other people. Well, I think he sent people occasionally just over the past 800 years. Uh, I'm pretty sure he would have remembered it the first couple of times he sent people there, but then they stopped coming back. I don't think he's the one that trapped it. Um, or at least, I mean, yeah, I agree that, yeah, certainly you would want to trap something like that or restrict people's use of it. But I don't think he trapped, I don't think he did this part that caused, likely caused the deaths of the people that he was sending after it to check on things. Um, but uh, either way, there's two issues here. One is the stone vault. I might be able to keep that from resealing just by rearranging things so that it doesn't work like it used to. Um, but we still would have we still have to get rid of that plant, which seems to be growing back. I mean, unnaturally, naturally, uh, not being a full spell of regeneration sort of thing, but it seems to be growing faster than plants normally do. Definitely. Yeah. Um, if it's one plant, if we could kill that, then that would be the end of it. How long does a master wizard's magic last? I'm not sure. I mean, would, we've would it seen be hundreds of years, as long as this vault's been here? I think so. I mean, the circle was here 800 years or more, and it's still functional. Although it's it's kind of technically a targeting thing, but. Uh, yeah, like some of the stuff we encountered in um, the Hag's Lair, uh, like uh, when we were going down through the mine, uh, there were spells there that probably have been, act have been active for hundreds of years. I mean, I pull out one of my crystal arrows. I mean, this was enchanted probably at the fall of Phylloxia. Yeah, it could be a thousand years. All right, I'm out of my depth, I'm out of so. ideas. If you need anything else, I'll be over there. Yeah, I'm thinking that maybe I can short-term disrupt the spells that are... At least long enough for him to learn yeah. it. That way yeah. we can come back here. We know how to get out of it. Yeah. Right? And we will yeah. not forget yeah. to tell anybody about it if we send other people here. Yeah. I mean, if we can't permanently disable the trap, that's fine. We can only yeah. do what, what we can do. I think um, that permanently disabling it might not be a good idea. No. Yeah, I'll agree to that, we, too. We don't also don't know who has access to this one yeah. and what we would be leaving open. Mm. Well, yeah, right now, I mean, it's not going to be giving access to anything that's in the old library anymore. Yeah. Because uh, that's all gone. Um, it would give access to the island and the bees, uh, yeah. the Nespari. The um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, I'll see if, if I can get things so that at least Zakis can have, at least if we can get in it, then Zakis can study it, and then yeah. we can mage hand our way back out. I roll nods as you come back over uh, to the watch. If you want to keep an eye on things, I want to check something. And Clark's going to go into the settlement. Okay. Uh, and just have a look around at specifically how the buildings came down. If it was age, if they were shoved, if they were grown through by mystical vines, okay. and eroded, that sort of thing. Um. Hmm. Does it look like a siege happened and the walls were knocked over with their insurgents, that sort of thing? I mean, the evidence is long dead, but he's shooting in the dark here. 
Let's call it a history check. <laughs> untrained? Uh, you can make this one untrained. Okay. Would that be a disadvantage? Uh, no. Okay. Basically, uh, it's a 18. 18. Mm -hmm. And no history bonus. Um, do you have the stat? Mm -hmm. uh, no. Zero. He's got mm -hmm. a 10. Yeah. But you Just still have your stat. Right. You, don't have, oh, yeah. you don't have the, uh, yeah. the proficiency bonus. Oh, uh, zero. Oh. <laughs> okay. He's not that wise nor, nor intelligent. All right. So you start walking around the ruins and starting to sort of map out and trying to project your imagination to say, okay, that looks like it was probably a tall building. And that looks like it was probably a stables of some kind. And you start to map out the, the town. And um, it probably had about 20 main buildings and you can kind of go off the main area. There's no real street so much as they're gathered around the, almost a circular, uh, circular area. Mm -hmm. um, but looking at the way that the, the, the remains of the stone are, for one thing, there's a lot less here than there should be. Okay. Or if they build with stone, there should be the fallen stones in different okay. places. Okay, so they probably used the environment that they had. So you're, you're mm -hmm. yeah, to build this, they probably built this out of the stone that was here. Right. Um, if, this, if the buildings just sort of sat where they were, there would still be stone buildings here mm -hmm. because they would last for a tremendous amount of time. Uh, but instead, you're seeing nothing but the low walls and a few other things. Something tremendous probably destroyed these. Right. Um, that amount of power, that amount of explosion is far beyond anything you could muster. But some of these Meiji types, they can produce incredible amounts of power. Right. Um, if that's the case, then this town was not only destroyed uh, as a side effect, it had to have been delivered. And not only that, parts of the buildings are missing. Okay. Which may mean that someone came later and took the stone and what they couldn't lift or heave away left behind, but it doesn't quite explain it. Okay. Thanks. Clark will ponder for 10 minutes or so doing that. Okay. Yeah, you're wandering around, kind of yeah. looking at that. In the meantime, you guys are still pondering over this. Yep. These I am going to cast Dispel Magic on the vines, just to see if it does anything. I mean, okay. What, um, you cast well, the Dispel Magic? Zacchaeus would probably be the one who would know that, I mean, that probably wouldn't really. You've already identified to us that we had found it. it's not a spell, it's right. just a plant. You would know that dispel magic can only affect spells, so it's probably not going to affect the plant. Okay, but I mean, uh, if there is an enchantment like affecting the plant and making it stronger, well, we it should well be. detect magic would be able to see it though. Isn't that what you saw? Like when there was like there was magic emanating from the stone, but the plant itself did not actually emanate. Oh, okay, so I wrote that down wrong. It's just a creepy plant. Um, well, uh, I'm going to try to. Dispel the magic on the door and then stone shape it okay. into a, a more easily usable door. Would you like me to, to dispel the thing? Like, I was going to dispel on the slab, is what I meant to say. Sure. Yeah, I mean, if you want to try dispelling the stone. What and magical uh, effect are you targeting? Whatever's on the stone that was detected. You know the kind of magic, but you don't know the effect. Well, there was something making the stone effectively sort of invulnerable. Like, you couldn't mark on it, you couldn't mm -hmm. do much of anything to it. That would be the abjuration one, probably. Yeah, like, if you if you tried to get rid of the thing that's that's protecting the stone, then I can try to shape it. Okay, so I will cast the thing, then you will cast the thing. Mm -hmm. So I'll target the abjuration. I'm gonna if back up. <laughs> okay. It's uh, fine, I, I tried a firebolt earlier, nothing wild magic cool. happened. I'm um, still backing up 45 feet. Dispel. Sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, Duration effects. Emeryn suggests whatever's like whatever in game it. turns means you might want to use a higher like a high spell slot. Uh, Do I know how powerful this magic however is? However, we describe that in the world. Uh, not well. You didn't see it directly yourself anyway. Uh, it has lasted for a while. It's some sort of permanent effect, so that's reasonably powerful. Okay. But it's. Unless you studied it for a while, you wouldn't know. How long is a while? Do some experiments, spend a half a day. Okay. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> I mean, I know the spells I've got that last very long or effectively, like, they'd be fourth yeah. level spells. Um, 
If Emeril casts this, then he's pretty powerful, so I'll just, I'll just go all out and cast it at max level, so level 5 dispel. Okay. Alright. Uh, roll me a d20. Oh, sorry, roll me 3d20. Interesting. 17, 6, 17. What modifier do I use? Uh, just attack modifier? No modifier okay. on that. 6, 10, 17. 6, 10, 17. Okay. Um, the magical effect goes off. Uh, normally, dispel magic doesn't really have much of a visual effect. In this case, you can kind of see a glittering from the stone itself as the magic seems to spread across the stone. Now, um, you immediately still have the, the detect magic up anyway. Yeah, I mean, if it goes down, I'd spend another few minutes or ten minutes getting it back. So you detect the 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 power of the abjuration magic waning down, but immediately starting to recover. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I will try to basically just stone shape. Like, it's a sort of a cube thing that we're uh, looking at. No, it's rectangular. Okay. Yeah, it's like this and buried into the ground. Yeah. I drew a picture. Um, picture. Make sure it's ish. Uh, yep, that's okay. about right. Uh, so basically, the f but it's a flat surface that we're looking at, more or less. Uh, I will basically try to shape that into a five foot door. Uh, I can do a door with hinges and a latch, uh, according to the spell. Well, simple hinges. Uh, yeah. And a simple latch. Yep. Um, it's one of those, like, lift the little lever mm -hmm. things. As um, you begin to move the stone, you feel it resist. Okay. Uh, and end up with the outline of a door, but not a complete door. Okay. So it's basically like it's like there's a door drawn on it. It's effectively okay. you etch the door in, but you were not able to complete it. Uh, as you do that and feel the resistance, you recall that on the other side of this directly is actually where the mechanism was, which means it's probably not entirely made of stone, or the stone is not natural. Hmm. Okay. Then, uh, uh, star shape level four. Um, Clerks disappear. Yeah. Okay. And I will immediately try it again. Okay. But lower down, and may, I still five feet wide, but a little further away from the mechanism. Okay. Um, There's not a lot of space on top of. This, but you start to carve out a narrow door, uh, and you can actually start to see through the stone as you start to push it slowly away. Uh, you carve out a space about two and a half feet wide, mm -hmm. about two, about a foot and a half tall. It's crude and nowhere up to the normal normal levels that you expect from that spell, but you can now see inside. I imagine there's a pressure change. Oh, and roll me two d twenty, please. I'm ruinery. Me. Would I have I'm to ruined. roll one for uh, commune? Nope. No. Okay. Nope. Eighteen and nineteen. Okay. Um. You well, notice the sparkling now, which also you notice, uh, Zach is as well. Mm -hmm. Is what was dull gray stone before is revealing small sparkles of crystal or crystalline uh, reflections within the stone itself. That's when you both sort of realize mm -hmm. this is not the stone it seems to be. Mm -hmm. um, and given your experience previously, somehow, you still don't know exactly how, but this stone is infused with the hump. Okay. Interesting. I hope I'm not giving the new queen a headache right now. But not like that. Um, and I'm able to tell this because I was like so one with the hum before. It's more of you're 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 kind of recognizing this reaction and this bit this strange reflection of the magic. Um, kind of looks like Shanks armor. Kind of looks like Shanks armor. Actually, mm -hmm. that's a really good comparison. Interesting. Um, Bring me the device. You also do have that dank, dry smell waft out towards you. Yeah, from I the think decaying bodies within. If you want to study this, we're going to have to go in now because if this is starting to if it's going to grow back... How do I get out? Well, yes, I know how I get out. Yeah, if it, if it goes back to full functionality, we just get out that way. But uh, if you're going to study it, we... How fast is the whole ceiling? Well, I, I don't know. moving at the moment. Yeah. 
I haven't noticed that it was, just right. if it's going to. We, we don't want to risk it. I'll be right back. And do a thing. Rift globe. Zoom. Yeah, okay. I'll go in with them. Okay. Just in case. Uh, it is a pretty tight squeeze. I'll make a roll, roll for it. Actually, I will make you roll for it because that armor of yours is pretty mm -hmm. clunky. Uh, but you hey, just wearing your Look cloth. at that. That's sleek. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have what level outside. of armor again? It's uh, second from the biggest. <laughs> uh, can I do acrobatics? Uh, no, because you really have to. Well, actually, no. You, it's you can shrug your way squeezing. through. Uh, I got a 12 then. 12? Well, okay. Uh, well, Zach, as you, you push on through without much difficulty, activating the drift globe on the inside because it will, yeah. it will yeah. just hang out outside if you just leave it uh, there. I do leave the shield outside because it's not going to fit in through a two and a half okay. foot. Uh, there is a bit, of, yeah. uh, a bit of that reflected gagging smell yeah. that you had heard had before. The air is still a bit musty, but a little bit of fresh air has come in. You see uh, Amrun kind of jam himself halfway through the hole. And you can feel the hole starting to close slightly as you as you pull yourself through. Mm -hmm. It was a little smaller than when you first entered it. Yeah, yeah, it is slowly growing smaller. So, all right, let's get to work. Mm -hmm. okay. So, in the circle. Oh, so I was going to ASAP. keep watch outside. Okay. Um. See the two oh. of them dive inside. And I will go. Uh, yeah, this hole is growing smaller. It may end up closing. We should probably be fine uh, getting back out the old-fashioned way. Can you brace it with um, something, maybe? Well, I was thinking actually putting a small piece of wood in there so we can hear a crack once it starts yeah. to get too small. Yeah, um, a small piece of wood. But somebody else I can do yeah. that. <laughs> well, already, it's probably too small for me to get back out through. Okay. All right. Look at the circle. Is, the is, is, is there an extra body in there? Uh, no extra bodies, okay. no. Just those same oh bone skeletons you'd seen awesome. before. Gotcha. Okay. Um, <laughs> and you start <laughs> setting the circle. I yep. This is going to take. How long is a while? Uh, this is effectively learning a book. Shit breaks. I will, uh, actually, I'll stack some skulls, uh, some body parts in the... Okay. Uh, kind of rinse them way. off of the, the skeletons they were still slightly attached to and stack up the skulls in, in the... Uh, Sorry, inside. but we, we need this more than you do currently. Uh, I'll, stuff those, I'll stuff those nice looking clothes in the bag too. Okay. Can I draw a copy of the circle? You need to study this. Okay. All right, I'll study the circle. I mean, you probably draw some of it as part of studying. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll study the circle anxiously. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I will attempt to, to help out if mm -hmm. I can, because I'm trained in arcane. You're not trained in this spell, though. No. Uh, and so the understanding of the subtleties of the teleporters and scrolls, so circle, are going to go right over your head. Sure. Uh, I'm just hoping if I can give him a bonus of some sort, but... Can you cast the Mage Hand? No. Okay. All right. You've set the, the skulls in place. Mm -hmm. uh, already, as you put them there, you can see the stone is starting to crawl up over the, the uh, stone, the skulls. Okay, yeah, we've only got, like, a little while, but... Uh, um, this is an extended task. Each task, each roll will take about 15 minutes. I'll take the skulls back out because I don't want them gumming up the works if the stone goes around it and then suddenly the door can't open. You pull the middle stone, uh, middle skull out and find the other two are still already fixed in position. But the st as the stone is just growing over whatever's there. Yeah. Uh, how long, how much strength did it take for the mage hand to pull the thing to open the latch last night? Not too much, really. No. Okay. Mage hand doesn't have, have a lot of strength. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, for now. Just kind of feel this squirming in your pocket. Ew. Yes, I, I know. As the little, um, little fake creature pops up in front of you. Could you do me a favor? Sure. What there do you is, need? There is a latch hidden above. You, you can't see it, but if you fly through that ceiling very, very carefully, just to make sure you find the right spot, go past the, illusor the illusory wall and pull the lever that you find there. Okay. Not that now, but... Well, first of all, can you just see if you can do it? I can try. All right. You got this. Good. Kind of vanishes into the illusion of the ceiling. Everyone eagerly waits to see if disaster happens. <laughs> you hear this? Let me see your pop out. It seems to be stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Probably because it just hasn't reformed and everything yet. Reformed. Well, the door. Oh, has the door. It. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully, we're right. Otherwise, we're all dead. Okay. Uh, you two are dead. <laughs> make a. Uh, oh no! <laughs> all of us. I, all of us I, down I, here. I mean. I've got the materials on me for him to teleport us out. <laughs> make a make an, an intelligence check. Me. Oh. Hmm. Eleven. Eleven. First, just straight intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. 
Huh, it's stuck now. It wasn't stuck before. What's stuck now? She said the uh, the mechanism was stuck now. Oh, yeah. And it wasn't stuck before. Uh, that's all you get for an 11. Yep. Uh, Do you say that out loud? Nope. Okay. I only got an 11. I'm not <laughs> thinking about it much. All right, so you're going to proceed to study this. It's a difficulty 15 task. Okay. Four successes before three failures. Each roll is a 15 minute task. Okay. And advantage because <coughs> it's Arcana? Or? You have uh, advantage because of your thingamabob. You can use that if you want. Yes. It's got three charges, right? Mm -hmm. Which? No, your brain circlet thing. Oh, know. right. Or the mm -hmm. necklace of color of brilliance. Yeah. yeah. Color of brilliance, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have advantage on, on it just from the skill. Okay. You just yeah. get the skill. You just have a really good skill. Yes. Okay, so I will do first ch uh, study round. Uh, is it a, a so does you have a skill to it? Hmm? Or unless you're using the thing. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I totally am. I don't want to fuck this up. Sorry. Okay, uh, so, so 15 plus 13? Okay, just okay, one yeah. second. What was the... No, I was, I was just wondering if you added a skill to it, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's a 28 on the first one. All right. Yeah. You've been studying a few of these now, and you're starting to get the knack of how the symbols are meant to be arranged. There's a there's one section which is for power, one for destination, one for um, kind of the, 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 the wrestling with the, the interdimensional space through which this passes. Starting to get the layout, you pull out your book, and you start to sketch this. Yeah. Not a problem so far. Standing by the door, you can see now that, that half of each of the skulls is is, uh, is taken up by stone. I'm not looking at anything. I'm just focusing on the sword. You guys okay in there? I think so. It's probably going to seal shut shortly. You, you though. see the the op the gaping maw that they crawled through now appears to have grown teeth, but then you realize, nope, that's two skulls that seem to be stuck to the top and bottom. Cameron was making little voices on them at one point. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that was, oh, wait a minute. Minutes. <gasps> Guidance. Well, that's, that's 15 minutes. Okay. So uh, the second one I'm doing with guidance? Apparently. I'm casting okay. it on him. Yep. All right. So you get a plus d4. But it's not an advantage. No. Unless you're using the... Only if you're using not this. Yeah, I'll take the straight roll in the guidance. Okay. And that's a natural one. Owie. Okay. Plus so one d4. That's, that's two failures. Two failures. Fuck. Doesn't matter, so natural one. You, natural you one. sketch it out and you start to do the inner rings. And then you realize that's completely wrong. And you scrap that page and you start oh a no. new page. Okay, third check. I'll use this circlet again. Okay. Thirteen plus thirteen, so that's twenty-six. No, I keep guidancing him. Okay, but okay. yeah. <laughs> this time you realize where you messed up. You were trying to draw a symbol there when you realized it was actually just a collection of different lines that were much smaller. And everyone was like making skull noises. It disrupted me. <laughs> At this point now, you can see the bottoms of the skulls are starting to be encapsulated by the by the stone. There's now only about a foot gap between yeah. the top okay. and bottom. Okay, next one is. So that's two successes and two failures. You need two more successes before one failure. And you yeah. have no advantage. But I have guidance, right? Yep. Okay, I'm not using this dice. D20 and D4. So six mm -hmm. plus 13, 20, or er, 19. 19 is a success. So that's your third success. 45 Eight. minutes have now passed. There's nothing more than a slim line between the two uh, the two parts of the stone now. It's Quad getting dark in here. Time. Look around. It's like, okay, okay, we still have air. You can see that there's a strange strip stain line on the thing. D4. It's still a 16. <laughs> 16? So with a D4, yeah. it's 16. I rolled, well, I rolled a 2 on the D20 and a 1 on the D4. Yeah. That was very, very close. Yeah. As you uh, complete the the uh, circle around the outside, um, looking at it now, comparing it and as the the last stuck. of the light from the outside vanishes, <laughs> leaving only the drift glo globe's light. Do you think you have the circle? Success! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's get out of here. Oh, right. Um, <laughs> Prina, try again. Sure thing. Kind of vanishes up into the, the darkness. A couple of seconds later. Are you pulling hard enough? <laughs> I think it needs to be the mage hand. I don't know if I'm strong enough for this. All right, let it me try seems something. Seems to be else. blocked. Mage hand. Okay. <laughs> cast. So this was a targeting roll because you can't see it. Well, he can just cast mage hand. Yeah. Mage hand just moves around. Yeah, but it's going through the illusion. Okay. All right, so I'll cast the mage hand and push it up towards where I saw Prina go. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll tell her. No, actually, no, Prina. Yeah. Let me know when the mage hand gets to the lever, okay? So she can like guide me. Okay. Oh, well, we've got light in here. Yeah. 
Yeah, but the illusion which covers the mm. covers all the area, you can't still can't see. I can't see. I can't see. Left, left. All right, not that far. A little bit to your right. My right. Okay. So okay. eventually, do I get to roll at advantage because I have Prina directing me? Or? Uh, no, she'll she'll direct okay. it there. There's no need to roll. Gotcha. Uh, okay, that's right. Pull. Yoink. Chick, chick. Um, try it again. Yoink. Chick, chick. It looks like it's stuck. I'll, I'll try it again. I'll try to help. All right. On three. Pull. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pulling. On three. One, two, three. Okay. And the thing cracks and smacks and whirs. And it does not open. I don't think this is the right thing. It worked last time. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Let me dig in a little bit. I think I can just squeeze it. Have the thing hold it open. All right. I'll have the thing hold it open. Okay. And you can kind of feel the mage hand hear this <laughs> as it uh, gets held open. I think I can just. Oh, that's a tight squeeze. Careful. Uh, oh. Don't get yourself killed. I can't see a thing. <laughs> it's dark in here. I'll put the drift globe up. Uh, okay. Drift globe up. And it kind of moves and kind of half, half in, half out of the illusions. Oh, that's better. Thank you. Huh. It looks like this thing over here is supposed to go clicking to this other thing over here, mm -hmm. but it's broken in two. Oh. Can you uh, press where it's supposed to go into the thing? Preferably without getting killed? I prefer not to get killed. Build it with your sword. That's why you don't <laughs> use crappy components when building your invulnerable trap. <laughs> the sword is not really going to work all that well. Why not? Kind of bent. Oh. It's okay. It springs back. Can you make As it? You remember, she has a small yeah. little rapier. Can you uh, make it spring back and try again? Okay, just make sure that hand's holding it, because I wouldn't want to get squished by this thing over here. And neither would looks, I. Looks bad. So the hand is like definitely not moving; it's holding onto the thing. Okay. The moment passes. Any luck? Almost there. You got this. Hey, is this stone moving? Did you press it? No. But it looks like the brake is smaller now. The brake? Ah, pull back out. It's fixing itself. Oh, okay. Break. What? Get out of the thing! But I'm almost there. I can almost reach it. Just get out. I just have to... Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. persuasion roll. Because once she's got her mind to a task. Thirteen. Okay. Is that your total persuasion? Yes. Okay. I have, like, zero charisma. All right. <laughs> At least it's not negative one. Yeah. Almost there. You're gonna die if you stay in there too long. You can. Uh, we don't want that. Shh. And put her in a dimensional pocket. <laughs> and is she listening now, or is she? Am I just I mean, waiting? You can't see her, and she doesn't seem to be saying anything. Um, one thing I will remind you of mm -hmm. uh, that you may have forgotten about find familiar is you can see through your familiar's eyes. Oh right, yes. I'll do that. Okay. Uh, make a concentration check, though, because you are still trying to make sure the mage hand is held there, and you're going to have to do that four. blindly. Okay. Um, as you stand yourself back and kind of close your own eyes and shut off your sensations of the outside world, and you kind of open your eyes again, and this weird sensation, which you've only used a couple of times before, I believe, of being able to see the world through Prina's eyes. Tiny little Prina the Fae, and you can see her pushing on what looks like a fairly complicated large mechanism, and then you realize from her perspective it's not actually that large. Uh, and there seems to be a couple of sort of cogs mm -hmm. that one was cut right in two, okay. right along the edge of where the door was. Um, and she seems to be trying to push the half that's up above to get the whole thing to turn. And then it starts to seal. So you can see now it's, it's actually a full thing. I got it. I got it. And you can see that she does seem to have it. Excellent. And then you hear this crunk from outside as the mage hand lets go. And then you can see the the uh, the bolt sliding right down through. And let's have Prina make a uh, dexterity save. Oh, no. She got an 8 plus whatever she has for a stat. I'm pretty sure she's done. <laughs> uh, 8's not quite enough. No. As you watch with horror from the inside of Prince's perspective, mm. as she's sort of celebrating, I got it, I got it, uh-oh. And then there's nothing, as you find yourself in your own body once more. 
as the door starts to lift up above. Is she dead or You did not sense Prina's presence. Oh. Thank you, Prina. I will resummon you. It's only gonna cost me fifty GP. Twenty. Really? Okay. It's only twenty. Um the door okay. Is Dismiss open. the mage hand. Okay. Walk out sadly. So what? Where's Prina? Uh, a thing happened. Oh, you were. Uh, oh, you must have put her back in the pocket dimension, right? Pocket dimension. Yes, you can. You can unsummon your familiars and then bring them back. I yeah, th this is something that uh, as a we've player, never really I mean, done it before. Yeah, it is something that a player uh, that you can do with the, with the five familiar. Oh, okay. You can actually put them away in their pocket dimension. I thought you meant like in the pocket, and it was like jokingly known as a pocket yeah, dimension. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming that, that generally in, in dangerous situations, you do actually literally put her in her pocket dimension. Okay. Where she can rest. Otherwise, she can st sleep, sleep in your pocket, and oftentimes comes back out through your pocket as well. Okay. I'll know that for the future. But in this case, she was not, unfortunately, uh, fast enough. But she will return. Part two. Yes. <laughs> Slight headache. <laughs> Part three. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we have been successful in that he knows how to, he, he can teleport us there again. Uh, and it is open at this point, standing there. Cargo. And it fixes itself. Cargo will be handy now. Hmm? Cargo has go? returned. Oh, okay. So yep. can I figure out if I'm breaking at the, the door, um. or me and Emeroon helping break the door, um. is what causes the gears to break too? Almost certainly. I think. I mean, there's nothing to really look at because nothing's broken. Somebody killed anymore. that village. Okay. Mm. But I mean, like, considering the how the stones themselves have been absorbed within the stone. But considering how I was like seeing oh, through Prince's eyes anyway, like how I was witnessing the things. Yeah. There was definitely I'd something inside that was that was cut and broken. Okay. And having yeah. seen what okay. he was doing earlier, trying to yeah. shape the stone, may very well have broken the mechanism. Yeah. I'll get all the vote. I don't care. All right. I mean, I'm not heartbroken keeping these flowers. We have this circle. Right. Okay. Oh, we no longer have Prina, unfortunately. What? Yeah, the lock was being finicky. She went in to investigate, and... Well, she fixed it. I can resummon uh -huh. her. Poor Prina. She's most likely visiting Fey family back home, I suppose. Until I have need of, need of her again. <laughs> uh, not to delay our exit any further, but I just want to let you two know, mm -hmm. uh, as I've already discussed, that the village that is over there uh, was, I'm pretty sure, blasted to pieces or, or undone. Mm -hmm. uh, purposefully. Very purposefully. I'll look at the village with the instru the information he just gave me. Does it make sense? Because I'm pretty sure I tried figuring this out earlier and I just mm -hmm. botched the roll. <laughs> With, Earlier, as in like with a the way ago. that he's describing it, I'm assuming Cargo going to detail. Because we're going to come back that way yeah, anyway. Yeah, so. yeah. This was yeah. probably a large building. There's no way there should only be the small amounts of the foundation left. Yeah. Even if it's been hundreds of years, the stone would be still around. Yeah. As, you, as he starts to lay it out, you kind of realize that, yeah, this was definitely deliberately powerfully destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> so Doing this stone here look like that crystal -y stone? This looks like mundane stone. Yeah. But then again, so did it. Until we opened it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I tell what kind of spell would have done that? I mean, powerful spells. Well, yeah. mm -hmm. Which one specifically? I might have read about it. There are a lot of spells that okay. could have done this. Anything that's really, really, truly powerful. Uh, you've read about sorcerers who are able to cause the earth to crack into. You've yourself been able to summon small elementals. A large elemental could do it. Uh, Lightning of high enough power can blow anything to pieces. Yeah, because that. Or even the gods. Stone doesn't it look it, but it really kind of looks like uh, Shank's armor on the Relative inside. to the Vator library, like how large is this little settlement? Is it possible that it was we a library to at one point? Yeah, similar to the. You're not really sure what the, the thing was originally. Oh, it was had stone. about a dozen main buildings, and there were probably. Um, some, you can see the ruins of some other smaller buildings out, out of the back. Okay. Nice, you leave. Yeah, I'm going to start preparing to head out to the park. Yeah. I'm just investigating. Where are you guys going? To the port. We're leaving. I think we've found everything we need to find here. Oh, you can't just tell me this kind of information and then just leave. Ugh. We're Hear leaving because it was the stone closing once more on the, on the mm -hmm. uh, box. We don't want to stay here any longer. Did you if you want to stay, that's on you. Did you happen to grab that fancy 
set of clothing that was in there? Uh, the yeah, the nice clothes. Oh, well, good. The ones I'm wearing, or was that the... No, that was no, a, a different we found two yeah, different ones, yeah. Two sets. Great. Right. In any case, I guess we can always come back here. Not I have the circle three. memorized. Ooh. You can. Well, if you want to come with me, just let me know. I'm pass. Okay. Yeah, I... I have no real intent on coming back here unless we have something to discuss with the Vespari, like we found a cure or something. I Other than that, this island is shitty. Yeah. You have found plants you have not seen anywhere on the tour. I mean, the plants here are cool. Mm. And, yeah. like, I might come maybe to come get some, but also that would probably be me coming here to get some to be able to try to grow. Mm-hmm on my own, so I don't have to come back. Yep. <laughs> okay. And also, uh, don't forget, you did find evidence of the Green Guard here as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In multiple places, maybe? No. No, it was, in, it was at the treasure room, so yeah, I mean, that was probably one of the early groups yeah. that got sent in. I meant to look at these skeletons in the room, but I didn't have time, because I was... They were mostly headless anyway. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah, after about five minutes, yes. All right, you um, make your way over to Port Alta. Mm -hmm. okay. The way isn't too hard to find at this particular point, partially because uh, four gave you directions, but also because this is not an uncommon, an un, uh, unfamiliar route. You actually came in this way before. As you exit the jungle once more, you start to pick up what are would be the commoner patterns, uh, commoner paths rather, because people do go into the forest, and do into the jungle to get numerous things. Mm -hmm. uh, there actually is a fair abundance of food in there. If you're willing to brave the dangers of potentially eaten by an animal, you may also find animals to eat. <laughs> and there are a number of paths, which are easier actually to see on the way in than they were on the way out. Uh, and as you come out of that path, you do and see, see what you had seen before, which is this massive ship that's now docked on the very high dock that leads from the upper part of Port Alta all the way out to the water itself. Uh, I mean, the top of the dock is actually uh, a little bit above the top of the ship itself. Uh, the tide it looks like it's probably a little bit low, so when the tide comes in, it's actually at the property level. You can see a fair amount of activity uh, as there are uh, wagons of material being uh, re uh, pulled out, because uh, they have no real animals, pulled out towards the ship. Uh, looks like lumber looks like barrels and, and crates of things as well. Um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of barrels and crates they make here, so probably they got them from the ship themselves, like empty stores. They've you now refilled. Mm. And you can see that activity extending all the way into the town. It's about a little after midday at this point, so some is that it's at its hottest. Uh, and yet a lot of people have been employed. So a lot of the crates are going towards the big ship? They're all going towards the big What's, ship. Are any of them? Are they all like sealed crates, or are they? Is there anything we can see that they're bringing onto the ship? Uh, nothing from this distance. Yeah. I'll just keep an eye on that. Okay. And keep an eye on, you know, sketchy people. Sure. Yeah, they go off in different directions. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> what kind of condition does the ship seem to be in? Like, is it run down, needing a repair? Is it good fighting conditions? Um. Think, uh, of the sales tag. You haven't had any experience at all with ships before? No. I'm just looking so at it from the perspective of like worn wood mm -hmm. holes, that sort of thing. I mean, he, he did help with the docks in it's true. the Queen. It's true. So. Um, of everybody here, he would have the most. Oh, <laughs> he's seen ships before, and I've you've all ridden ships. on a ship before. Oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot about that one. But that's not a real experience. I've ridden on ships before. I couldn't tell you anything about mm -hmm. them. Uh, but water. looking at it from kind of the appraiser's eye, the angle yeah. that you, you've known, things that have been worn down over time. It looks to be in relatively good condition. There's definitely a couple of, of holes to be patched. You can actually see there are people working on it now, taking advantage of the uh, the fact that the ship is probably pretty empty as it's riding high mm -hmm. in the water, uh, and are working on a couple of smaller holes, uh, or pulling off some wood that looks like it's burned and charred. Um, the, uh, the ship has a... a a very large, very ornate back end. Far more ornate than any ship you'd seen before. And in fact, this ship dwarfs most of those. Uh, three massive mm. masts, the sails are now currently down. Um, you can see actually that they are, are taking a bit of time even to 
add a bit of paint to the outside. Uh, maybe they've gotten some, some pigments from the island itself to actually uh, add a bit more red coloring back mm. to the side, the side of it as well. They're also adding uh, what looks like tar and you can kind of smell once you see it. It's that weird sensation that happens to a lot of us that once we once we can see something we can suddenly smell it as well and you can smell the, 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 the burnt pitch smell of them is what they're applying along mm. the water line as well. Do we see a name on it? Uh, I would do. have told you the name that was given. Okay. Is it like Rose Revenge? And it is the Rose Revenge. Oh yeah, yeah. I forget what was already mentioned. Um, but you do see a nameplate across the back and the stylized rose that's there as well with nasty looking thorns. Probably the rose head would be about four feet across and the thorns yeah. themselves are about a foot and a half long. Does it have a flag or pennant or anything that's flying? It is flying a flag. Uh, it is a deep red colored flag with what looks like to be a small white streak across. I'm not sure if that's what I described last time. But that's what I'm I honestly forward. don't remember. <laughs> that's good. Because so. you were the one that saw it before. That's why I was asking. Exactly. Hmm. Uh, the player did not take that good of notes about that. Ask Zacchaeus if that flag looks familiar to him. Doesn't look familiar. Uh, make a history check. Mm -hmm. 16 right. plus 9, so 25. Okay. You look over at the ship and kind of take in the flag and take in the whole ship uh, as it is. And there is something startlingly familiar about this style of ship. You've read about stories of ships like this before. Uh, when there was, uh, over 800 years ago, a, an empire that was formed, when several of the islands banded together to face off against the hobgoblins uh, when they tried to invade, there was an empire, and there was an emperor, and the emperor had commissioned some of the best ships that had ever sailed. This has the striking uh, resemblance of an imperial ship. Okay. The flag, definitely not Imperial. That's much newer than the rest of the ship. Um, but you've not heard of this particular flag. Good. Okay. Are we Clark? like in the city where there's a bunch of other people in there right now, or are we still? This is just you cresting on the outside, the outskirts of the town. Good. You so can see the rest of the town vertically down, down by you. Clark would like to check his deck box. Okay. Let's see if it's empty. Mm, it is empty. Good. Uh, Clark will make a small note. Uh, what's this boat called again? Rose Revenge. Okay. And he'll scratch Rose Revenge on a piece of paper and, okay. and send but that message. It's Rose Revenge or Rose's Revenge? The Rose Revenge. The Rose Revenge. Okay. 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 Um, so what's the plan? I need to drop off some flowers. That's all yep. I want to do here. I don't want to stick around. Um, we should keep our friends away from slavers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think... Hey, other than you going to turn in those and me, I just want to go talk to the sheriff for a bit. Um, Please don't cause any trouble. No, I don't we plan don't to. We don't need to bail you out of jail. We just need to bring this device back to the as quickly as possible. Um, other than that, I think everyone should stay in a large group to make sure that nobody gets whatever Snatched they away. would call Shanghai. <laughs> um, Altered. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Thanks. we'll all sit, stand in a circle with our backs together and weapons drawn. <laughs> <laughs> we just calmly walk through the city. This um, our own suspicions. Uh, other than that, yeah, I mean, I, we can head out as soon as possible. Do you have the materials for teleportation? I should. <laughs> Did you spend 50 gold on the right uh, mm -hmm. uh, gemmed chalks? Probably. I believe. I, I believe that anything you did. Oh yeah, well, yeah. yeah, I did to make sure that we would have a route home. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's I a think, bit absent-minded. Well, I think actually that should be part of the group fund thing. Would be making sure we've got enough for a couple of teleportations of that. Yeah. Um, instead uh, of having him pay for it constantly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I, that's it. I mean, I have no urge to get fleas. Same. Uh, I just. I, I itch again. I just want to check on those three guys, see if any of them is innocent, and see if there's something I can do if they are. If they're not innocent, that's fine. I'm curious about that shit, but I, I guess I can read about it. I have a mess kit missing. Mess or a, a good pan. Um, if you happen to come across it, uh, feel free to relieve it from whoever took it. If I happen to see it, sure. Although I think those guys are probably off in the woods still. <laughs> I can get you a new mess, uh, a new pan if you wish. 
not from here. Probably a good idea. It'll yeah, be a messy pen, not a mess pen. Yes. Um. Okay. I'll stay with the people. Emrin heads off. I, I'll stay as well. Uh, uh, I head off. Get yourself killed, please. As well. That's not going to happen. Okay. So who's going where? Just to be we clear. are staying. Okay. They are going. Okay. Yeah. And the rest of the group is staying with the two of you. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So on the edge of town then. Yeah, I'm going to the sheriff, and she's going to the person who wanted to get the flowers. Okay. Abatros. Um, I would have separated. I would. I'm keeping half of what I collected for myself. Okay. So, I would have already separated that. All right. Um, why don't we deal with that first then? Did you want that stuff put in the bag of preservation? Sure. Okay. There's enough space, like 200 pounds in there, so yeah. it's easy. And they're small flowers, yeah. for the most part, flowers and roots. Yeah. So you retrieve all of that, yep. and take your bundle over to, uh, what was his name again? Abatros. Uh, At least that's what my chicken scratch looks it like. It might have been Albatross, because I do have uh, Tucker, who's the Albatross. Um, you see that he is quite busy. Um, there is a rather attractive looking woman dressed in a very large hat smoking a very ivory looking pipe who stand, seems to be standing there uh, wearing uh, a deep red uh, uh, velvet cloak mm-hmm. um, with a nice uh, buckled wood leather boots uh, looks to be there rather impatiently waiting for Albatross to get uh, as many of these things loaded into a, uh, a couple of crates as possible. They're hand uh, bottle crates mm-hmm. uh, meant to hold about six at a time, and he seems to be loading up about four of those crates. Inside, you can see half of them seem to be the familiar uh, sort of uh, soft red uh, uh, healing potions. Mm-hmm. The rest you're not familiar with. Um, Yes, I'll get to it. I, I just need a few more materials. I've I've sent out for some more. I, I knock. <sighs> yes. I might have some for you. Oh, good, good. Come in. Uh, and the, the woman kind of eyes you warily, looking you up and down. From here, you can tell that um, there's a little bit of elven heritage in her background. Her, she looks mostly human, but her ears are slightly pointed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, she's smoking this rather ungodly looking uh, uh, pipe made out of probably a single uh, bone of ivory. Mm. Um, and you can see that the, the, the pipe itself looks like it's carved into the shape of a skeletal hand holding the bowl on the other end. I'm just in a very nice yellow sp- summer dress. <laughs> oh, <laughs> With there, my I thought you were going to say sports coat. Kind of. <laughs> That's kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I am dressed like Don Cherry. I'm dressed like a clean pirate, I guess. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, I give him the blood root by uh, the Adarna and the Jello that I collected for him. Okay. Uh, he takes each of the items in, he weighs them on a set of balancing scales um, against some standard weights. It looks like. Uh, Taste the Jello. Hmm. Fresh. Very good. Very picked good. it last night. Oh, excellent! Excellent. Oh, uh, all of this was picked up yesterday afternoon. Good. Good. Keep it up like this, and I'll be able to give you a living wage. I'm not sticking around. Can I convince you to stick around? Might be, might be difficult. Might come and visit, but not more than that. All right, all right. Let me see. And he starts to separate them all out, and you see him pull out some some burlap sacks and kind of start mm-hmm. putting them into different burlap sacks uh, to sort them all out. It takes him about fifteen minutes. Um, The woman standing by the door uh, while he's sorting us all out. So you're not staying, are you? No, I have some place to be. Oh, I didn't see another ship in the yard, which means you've got a different way off the island. Yeah. Interesting. Whereabouts are you heading, dear? The tour. Oh. Landlocked. Don't like it too much. Don't get yeah. up that way very often. What brings you all the way down to here? Uh, are you Are you fleeing the war as well? We've been hearing about the war, not necessarily fleeing, because the tour's kind of far from it already. Not from what I'm hearing. Not very far at all. It may be landlocked, but it has water to the north and water to the south. 
And those damn hobgoblins don't seem to wait. Build a ship every day, I hear. More's the pity. Ship goes down every day, too. <laughs> Takes a long drive from the pipe. Yeah. I can give you uh, 325 gold, not a penny more. Sure. Cool. <laughs> right then. Uh, he kind of blinks, obviously used to bargaining a lot more. Um, just let me count it out. Um, the woman keeps sort of examining you, and you feel this feeling of being assessed. You're a druid, aren't you? I can always tell. Yep. No. I would have thought you'd also be running somewhat from what I hear. I'm kind of in the middle of stuff, so I have I take my responsibilities very seriously. Do you? Well, that's good. I mean, from what I'm hearing, those damn shadows are ravaging town after town. Yep. We've been trying to deal with it as best we can. Are they here? Then? I haven't seen any here. Oh, well, that's good. They don't seem to fare well over the open water, which is where I'm hoping to be. Hopefully. You hear this of the bag of coins. Uh, I don't have all gold, but the silver is still good. Yeah. I don't double count it. I just put it in my bag of holding. And another run? Yes? I'm heading out later today. Uh, but I did send the peop the three guys you sent out for some more of this in the King's Route. Really only one and a half is all they're used for, but at least uh, they'll come back for some. You said uh, King's Blossom. Good, yeah. good. I'll need a lot, a lot of the, that. I only sensed one, but I did send them uh, in the direction of some. Well, they'd better come back with it, is all I can say, if they plan to get paid at all. Yeah. And no good forest. Yeah. Ho hopefully everything goes good. Certainly. Is there anything else? Do you have any more? I have some more, but I want to study it, because there's some that, some of these plants that I don't know, and I would like to study for my own use. Oh, right, that's right. You, you're you a mixer yourself, aren't you? Yep. It's been a long time since I've seen another mixer come by. Maybe I could learn anything from you. I mean, I'm just a beginner. All right. Well, if you're back in the island again, yeah. let me know. I can always use more pickers. Yeah. Uh, I like to say a couple of the stuff that my dad taught me over the winter. And okay. Like that's That tea sounds interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it, it does. Never seen any black moss around here, though. Yeah. So I don't think I sensed any. Pity. Hard to get in. Not too many ships landing in here these days. Yeah. Well, have a good day. Uh, and I might be around again and pop by if I'm in town. Good. I could use more pickers, as I said. So. Good luck, little one, in your travels. I hope the shadow doesn't catch up to you unless it's on your terms. Yeah. Thanks. I back up. Oh, leave. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Back up, back up, back <laughs> up. <Really? laughs> Wall. <laughs> Not quite, but like. Okay. Outside the Reeves office, if you can call it that, the small building which you call Hell the Zone, you still see the three uh, caged prisoners. Mm. Well, how far apart are the cages? Uh, about uh, 20 feet apart. apart. Okay. Um, I will. Knock on the Reeves door. Okay. Or unless I see him around, in which case let's walk up to him. Not, not on the noonday sun, no. Um, and it is quite hot and oppressive. But you knock on the door. Um, the door swings open pretty quickly. Uh, there is a the Reeves standing there. You can see he's holding a short sword. Who is it? Oh, it's you. What do you want? Did you expect to be attacked? Never mind. I just remember where I am. Mm -hmm. It's always um, better to be safe. Not too many people come knocking on my door unless they mean something. Um, may I come in and talk for a moment? You want to come in here? Fine. Well, See yourself. unless you want to come out here. Yeah, it probably smells better. He steps out and has to be out by pushing by you out to the outside. Sure. Yeah, maybe I was wrong. I could smell rotten fish from here. 
Yeah. What do you want? Well, you still convinced these three are innocent? No, I don't know if they're innocent or not. Uh, however, I have a spell that may be able to determine if they were innocent or not. Is that so? Now, as I understand it, that their innocence doesn't exactly matter. What matters is that someone uh, paid or requested to have them punish someone with influence. Justice isn't free. If they are innocent, is it possible to buy their freedom? I suppose if you're willing to house them, I can make a prisoner transfer. No, I say if, I, if they're innocent, can I... I can't let them roam free, no. But if you're willing to take them, you can buy them. Sure. Okay, this uh, should not take too long. Uh, if you could come with me, I would need you to recite the charges, as I myself do not know exactly what they're each charged of. Is this going to take long? Only long enough to ask them if they're innocent or guilty. Uh, fine. Um, and he'll she go up. the short sword for the first time. Uh, yeah, no, I think I'm still going to have to do this as two separate spells. No, wait, no, sorry. It creates a 15-foot radius sphere, so okay. that actually should reach all of them. Yeah, um, and just, just on the edge. Yeah. Um, uh, Emron will go up, and uh, he will cast that. Uh, cast what? Zone of Truth. Okay. Everyone in the zone gets to make a charisma save against 16, and I know if they've failed or not. Okay. Uh, dice, back here. Can you ask them to not make a save? Or can you ask them to not resist? I mean, it's, it's yeah. Well, actually, I I will talk to them first. I say I. Okay. One of them has barely got any voice at all. It seems like he hasn't had any water for a while. Um, um, one of them is kind of half delirious from the heat. May I actually ask the Reeve? May I give them some water so that they may answer without them being penalized? Just enough, just to swallow. Um, well, I kind of have to do it as a light rain, but it doesn't last long. Okay, he'll do that. So basically, there's like a, a temporary, like a short fall of rain. I tell them to cup their hands like before. And uh, they are quite surprised at the strange rain. You can hear the metal of the uh, the shoot. I forgot the name. Gibbets. Gibbets. Thank you. Uh, as they are struggling to kind of twist around, they aren't really large enough for them to fully stand or yeah. fully sit down. Um, so they're kind of twisting around and kind of trying to grab a little bit of water and slurping it uh, carefully. Uh, no. Huh, that's something you don't see every day. Oh, yeah, I'll mark that off. Um, if you are innocent, I may be able to help your circumstances. Please, I am going I'm to, innocent. I didn't do it. I am going to cast a spell. If you do not resist the spell, then I may be able to help you. What are you going to do to me? He's going to make you say whatever he wants to. It's just the third man who hadn't said anything at this point. Seems a bit better dressed than the other two. This is a spell to let me know if you're telling the truth. That is all that it does. And how do you know what the truth is? The spell will tell me. Huh. Never seen a spell that do anything like that before. Most of them make you lie. This one probably does too. Don't believe him. Well, if you wish to resist, that is up to you. If you resist the spell, I will be unable to help you. I look at the others. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, he'll cast Zone of Truth that lasts like 10 minutes. Uh, okay. And it's a charisma save. Okay. What's the save difficulty? 16. Okay. Uh, do any of the prisoners or the Reeve succeed in saving? Oh, the Reeve. You want to keep him in the well, it's It's everyone in the area. Uh, the Reeve does not succeed. Ooh. Uh, okay. the, horse, uh, the horse-voiced one uh, did not succeed. Uh, the one in the middle did not succeed, but the one who had spoken up before did succeed. Yeah, okay. The well-dressed one? Okay, yep. Yeah. Well, uh, I tell the Reeve I cannot uh, read that one, but uh, these two I can. If you could state what the one on the right, the horse one, uh, is guilty of, uh, 
one charge at a time. I don't know if he's guilty or not, but he and it kind of stops himself. Why did I say that? <laughs> he's accused of... And actually, they all know if, if they're affected as well. Sorry. Yeah, but uh, he doesn't understand the yeah, logic. Yeah, there's basically, all. if they would go to tell a lie, they can know not to if right. they're... I mean, depending on the And he stopped himself reason. before he yeah. spoke too far. Um, so if you can read the charges, uh, sir, if you could uh, uh, say if you are guilty or not guilty after each of the charges. Okay. Um, for the, uh, starting with the one in the middle, the one who is, uh, sure. who's uh, succeeded or failed as well, uh, the charge, first of all, is of thievery, uh, to which he grits his teeth and doesn't say anything. Uh, if you do not answer, I cannot assist you. Actually, not answering will be counted as a plea of guilty. You're just as bad as he is. That's what they said to me when they picked me up. Are you innocent? I needed to eat. Then you are guilty of theft. Yes. I do look at him compassionately as well. He's, he, it's not a, oh, you guilty. Um, then what's, I look back at the Reeve, what's the next charge? Uh, a second count of thievery. Are they all counts of thievery? No, no. Okay. Three counts of thievery in total. Yes, I did it. One count of adultery. She didn't tell me she was married. Well, that's yes. And one count of attempted murder. It wasn't so much an attempt as to failure. So you did try to murder someone? He caught me with his wife. What did you expect me to do? <laughs> Run. I didn't exactly have my pants in the right place. Uh, well, I turn to the next one. Okay, the horse-voiced uh, one. Uh, one count of thievery. Yes. Did it. Uh, one count of uh, assault causing bodily harm would be our equivalent, modern day equivalent to that. Yep. And then three counts of attempted murder. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that was a mistake, just a misunderstanding. He fell on my dagger, <laughs> just happened to be holding it there. And I honestly didn't well, think he was going to die. Technically, if he's saying it, that's the truth. <laughs> but, however, he is guilty of attempted murder twice over. I and didn't do it. I mean, I didn't actually do it. I mean, I didn't actually kill anybody. That yes, just makes you, you a terrible assassin. You did want to kill them, though, right? I mean, yes, but okay. that's not the point. That kind of is the point. Damn it. <laughs> well, I, uh, say, my apologies, but though I disagree with the method of punishment, you are both guilty of attempted murder. How long have they been hanging here? About three weeks. Uh, Can you tell by the smell? No, I've never been in a place where justice was this... Smelly. Ugly. It should be. If it weren't ugly, people would keep doing all kinds of terrible things. I disagree. But That's your, that's your option. Would you yes. live here? Well, you're going to ask me what my crimes are, says the third fellow. Well, what are his crimes? I don't have a spell for before this. The, before the, 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 sh the Reeve answers, he says, First of all, my impeccable fashion sense always gets me into trouble. I can't help it. It was something I was born with. And then there was the fact that, yes, I broke a string, but that doesn't mean that it was worth fighting over. And yes, I won the fight, but that's not the point either. I also won all of their money. Yes, they were just trying to hold on to it at the time. Is that a good enough comp confession for you? Oh, One. Mr. Man of Justice. Is his fashion sense, in fact, impeccable? It's hard to tell through the bars, in fact, and his clothing is not exactly up to perfect snuff. Oh, mm. excuse me. And he kind of 
uh, brushes off his clothing, and you see his clothing look visibly better as he does so, mm. humming a little something under his breath. Do I recognize that spell? Make it a counter roll. Being that I use it a lot, that's a 19. Oh, yeah. You definitely recognize prestidigitation. Hmm. Well, I'm a little surprised you're in here, but... Uh, it's the cheapest uh, rent I could find. Granted, the room's a little smaller than promised. Yeah, a little hotter. Um, I asked the Reeve what uh, his charges are. Well, he's kind of got the right of it. He caused a bar brawl, then ran out with a bag of money. So, so assault and theft. Essentially. Hit the wrong person, stole the wrong gold. Mm. How much money? Honestly, I don't know. I asked the guy, how much money? Oh, it was a heavy bag. I'd say at least 500 gold. I think they found 300 of it. Hmm. Not bad. Um, Good for a night's haul. Hmm. That's when I realized the ship I came in on had already left. I had terrible timing sometimes. How long has he been here? About a week. It's been a long goddamn week. God's damn week. Um, and who did he assault and how badly? Just uh, the fellow gamblers? Well, it was a bar brawl. Uh, so we counted it on his tab. Incitement to violence. Mm. Uh, they just can't take the proper, proper uh, muse of a good song. What about my losses? What about my, my fiddle? I broke a string. Ah, that was the broken string. I was wondering. I thought you might add a string of winds. Uh, no, well, I hadn't yet gotten to gamble. Ah. I was laying down the foundations in this wonderful little town when I decided, hey, maybe I can give them a little more incentive to give me all their money. Never really works out that well. Say, you aren't leaving this island sometime so soon, are you? Do you come with that big ship over there? Yes and no. You did come with the big ship over there, but you're not planning on leaving? Uh, consecutively. Yes, I'm planning on leaving. No, I'm not doing another ship. Oh, well. You've got another ship. That sounds grand. Looking for a passenger, someone who can sing. Um, I can work my way across the sea. Hmm. I've done it before. Hmm... How soon until he's to be let out? Uh, he's got two more weeks. I'm sure you can afford it, good sir. You seem of a man of fine taste and pretty armor. Just trying to think. Okay, three weeks out in the hot sun in a gibbet versus inciting a bar brawl and stealing money. But the fact that he was intent on scamming people for money anyways. I don't think I can do anything for you either. You can't do anything, can you? That's terrible. You demonstrated thrice over that all you are is words, but you can prove yourself to be better than that. I know. I'm water, too. That's amusing. In fact, I could destroy this town if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I wouldn't make a threat like that. <laughs> and it's not a threat. If it's a threat, the water would already be moving. If you have such power and you use it, it's a threat. Don't make me mm -hmm. regret having him talk to you. No, I have no intent on destroying this town. You see that? He's willing to destroy this town over nothing worth worthy than an insult from me, of all people. Just imagine what he'll do to you. And that's why I don't let him out of the gibbet. Uh, the, uh, the... Well, I think the, we're the done here. He looks at you and, and actually looks back at him. Uh, what is your intent in town? Well, to leave shortly. We're just here to turn in some flowers for my friend. And I wanted to see if anyone here was innocent and should be freed. Um since they're not innocent, then uh, I will leave them with you. Why did you threaten this town? When you just said you could destroy this entire town. I can. Why would you do such a thing? To. What could, is your intent here? I could Who do you off, represent? I could jump off this dock if I wish to, but I don't. That's, that's not important. I'm here because some people have been threatened with this town. And you just made a major threat against this town. Hmm. Who threatened the town? You just did. No, you said you're here because some people threatened the town. Oh, you were probably hired a while ago because people were threatening the town. I get that. I'm not threatening the town. You just did. You said you could destroy it anytime you wanted to. 
yes, I have the power to do so if I wanted to, but I don't want to. Why would you say such a thing if you didn't intend it to be scary? You well, see, you see, he's just trying to play down now. He's all afraid of you. At some point, I'll get to talk between your characters. <laughs> um, no, that was because he was being a bit of a jerk. Uh, if you hadn't been, I might have actually paid to free you, but... Oh, uh, you can afford such a thing. I that... I can smooth over this little riff with a reeve if you'd like. It's just also, a you might want to watch yeah. out. I mean, he's got magic. I don't know how much, but I am s still surprised he's in the gibbet. What ship are you coming with, sir? I didn't come with the ship. Then I'm going to have to ask you to come with me. Where? To the chains. Why? Because I think you're a threat. What if I leave town? You may, in time, after we check into this. Hmm. <laughs> Don't not get in trouble. He puts his hand on the short sword. Don't make me do anything you might regret. Well, there. I'm on my way then. I'll walk past him. Okay. I assume we have to go back up the dock to get to the rest of town, anyways. Yeah, I remember most of the town is built on a vertical plane mm -hmm. along the along the curve. He puts his hand on your shoulder and directs you. No, he tries to. He certainly tries to. Uh, I resist. Oh yeah, I hit the edge and start walking towards my friends. Okay. He's going to try to grab your shoulder. That is a 14 to grab your shoulder, which I don't think succeeds. Uh, if it's an attack against AC, no. If it's a grapple, then technically I should make an acrobatics. Oh, that's true, yeah. It's a which I suck at. Can I make an acrobatics? Surely can. I got an 18. 18? You yeah, you've got a duck, under, a duck under his hand. He goes lurching a little bit forward. Hey, stop, wait. And he draws his short sword. I will be leaving as soon as we You're get coming to with the me. end. I have some questions to ask of you. Yeah, you can ask them right here. My friends are right over there. You're oh going to do God. it in change where I know it's safe. Looks like that. <laughs> make a make an insight roll. Natural one. Okay. Uh, he seems intent on taking you in. You're not sure what made him so angry. Mm. Failed attack or save roll. Nope. Okay. Um, no, I keep going. Okay. He's going to try to restrain you again. Natural 20. Oh. I got an 18. Okay. How far away are they from us? Uh, you guys are at the edge of the town. He, these two went in. Okay. But I, How we can't far see were right? the, uh, would he be from the flower shop? Or Not that far. You're basically two levels below him. Uh, and you can hear the shouting up above. Uh, he grabs onto your arm and twists it behind your back. I'll, I'll go up. If, uh, okay. No. And he starts to move towards the, uh, towards his office essentially. I cast. Oh wait a minute. No, I probably don't have that memorized. Uh, I was expecting something to happen. Mm. Let's see. No, I don't have the calm emotions one that I think. Hmm. Probably sounds like a lot of criminals just kind of muttering as they're being frog walked somewhere. <laughs> well, uh, he doesn't do things quietly. Um, he says, uh, let all near me feel the benevolence of Paluxia, which is the uh, spell for his beacon of hope. Okay. <laughs> uh, as you uh, you light up on, on uh, mystical blue fire and the swirls. Well, more like water. The but swirls yeah. uh, of, of Plexi's power swirl around you. And anyone near me, which I'm going to include him, gets uh, advantage on wisdom saves. Okay. Because uh, it's the closest thing I can think of to the Calm Emotions spell. Because I didn't prepare that. So he'll give it a try. It tends to give people hope and make them happy. Uh, just one second. And yeah, I don't think it's actually going to help anything because it's what I think it is. It's not wisdom. Okay. It is a wisdom save. Yeah, neat. As he sees the bright light, stands back a step. Oh, and rolls a success. 
you feel the uh, the twist on your arm lighten as he steps back a couple steps from you. What? What the hell? What did you do to me? This? This fills people with hope. Hope? What the hell's going on here? What did you do to me? Are you feeling strangely? Why? What a stupid question. Of course I am. You're glowing and I'm confused. <laughs> okay. So the Emma doesn't have access to any of those class of spells. Um, I do, generally those spells leave you with the knowledge of who did this and that they manipulated you afterwards. Although not always. Um, you seemed to get very angry with me. I wasn't certain why, but I think perhaps... Well, I know that man up there is a spellcaster. And you're pointing up to the gibbet? Yeah, the Did third one. Where well, the hell did he go? Like I, like I said, he was a spellcaster, and I was surprised that he was still in the gibbet. He's either gone invisible and is still in the gibbet, or he may have a way of teleporting out. Well, I... How do I... Stop him? I don't know. Damn it. I, we, the only place I've seen that could hold a magic user was a town called Farhaven, and they could only do it because they were incredibly rich and could afford to have a jail that kept magic users from casting spells. That's why I wanted the medicals, damn it. Well, he goes over the, the weak voiced one, he's kind of leaning in, in the cage, kind of giggling to himself, and then kind of points. And you can see on the rooftop on the other side of the lower level uh, the, the rather dashing uh, young fellow running away. Yeah. If you're going to tie them up, I would suggest uh, gagging them and or uh, weaving threads around their fingers. They can't cast, they need to move fingers. First, I gotta catch him. He runs off Good in luck. the same direction. Stop, you bastard. And he starts to run. He is not quite as adept on his feet as the other fellow is, though. And you can see the other fellow is going to get away pretty quickly. How far away is the other fellow? At this point, about 60 feet. Do and you see this, this shadow of darkness as he appears another 40 feet away? Do okay. I show up then? Uh, yeah, you hear the, the shouting and you see this fellow okay. kind of wave to you and then vanish. Um, do I, did I catch any of the, that? Uh, you saw the big beacon after a bit of shouting, yeah. and um, Rune kind of standing there. It's still currently someone. glowing, technically. So, and I, I would have been able to read what was going on. Um, yeah, more or less. Uh, so, I know that that dude escaped. So I'm gonna call lightning. I mean, you do remember the reason that Rune was going up there yeah. was to free the innocent. Yep, but I also know that. <laughs> and you know, Amrun does not do things subtly. I know Amrun doesn't do things subtly, but I I know he's not stupid and wouldn't have done... S nope. Nope. <laughs> I can't even make that argument. Yep. I can't even make that argument. <laughs> well, he isn't stupid, but he is foolhardy. You know, I, I can't say that. I, nope. I know he wouldn't do something I, stupid like let the guy you'd out. You'd see that Amrun is basically just kind of standing there looking, going, hmm. Yeah, and he turns around and heads back. Doesn't seem to be interceding at all. Cool. I would have, but he just jumped out of the way, so. Yeah. yeah. One of the new guys they had there was a bard, I think. Oh. I don't know why the bard stayed in the gibbet for a week, but that's on him. Um, none of them were innocent. You see the Reeve kind of running, trying to catch up to him, but he's very quickly lost in the crowd. Yep. Yeah. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go, too. And with that, we're going to take a break. Yeah, sounds good. A little, little overdue, but we'll take a break. We'll come back for the last bit of this. I suppose Yay, I we have, don't have I to have break and run out of jail. Have, have <laughs> Again. We got a note, just in case. <laughs> Post-break, right. let's break and run out of jail. We'll be right back.
back after a very short break, minuscule break, in fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, which currently is the only way that can happen. Uh, if you do want to spread the joy and they'll tell other people about it, uh, there's a couple ways you can do that. I mentioned here as we return back from the break. You can like, you can subscribe, and you can ring the bell for notifications. On, on uh, YouTube. On the YouTubes. And also go to the Watchers of the Drowned Isles to join in the group of people who can talk about the game. We're all there, too. Uh, or the page? Yeah, it's just the Legends of the Drowned Isles on, on Facebook. Uh, and it is linked to the group, so you can find it through there. Cool. As we resume, tempers have flown temporarily high from the Reeve, somewhat confused as to Amrun's own, uh, own uh, place in the society, and then now running off chasing after his now newly escaped prisoner. Seems to have left Amrun to his own devices to probably return with Elzara yep. back to the campsite. Or the place just outside of town where you guys had gathered. So what happened? <laughs> oh, I think the one of the guys that was up there, I don't know if he was up there when we first came in, but no, was he'd he? been in there a week, he was there. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure he's some sort of caster. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a bard. They like to talk to people. I'm pretty sure he made the Reeve angry with me. Uh, I see. And then left. I mean, again, he was in there for a week and didn't just leave, so I don't know what he was there for, but either way, he's gone. Oh, well. We're leaving this island anyway. Mm-hmm. As I fast as possible. No. Meanwhile, back at the camp, you have been sitting down with this book of yours, this, mm -hmm. I believe it's Elwyn's Guide to Demons Both Useful and Not. Yeah. Take another peruse for this book. I'm yeah, trying to find Pichuro in there. It's the second time we've encountered his name, and he seems pretty demonic, so... Mm -hmm. Is there an entry? Or a mention of him anywhere? So, the once-a-day bonus won't be oh, fed for right. you yes. anymore. Uh, but you can make a roll. It will be at disadvantage now. Uh, okay. I'll do it at disadvantage. There's a 3 and a 4, plus 13, so 16. 16. <laughs> You're looking through, and part of the problem you're realizing is you don't yet know the alphabet translation for something that sounds like common, in, in, like in common, Baturo, how that actually works, but no entry seems to come up. Nothing There's no table of contents because of course no. not. Because if you recall, this book has also got hidden entries, which is what you're actually looking through. The broad entries, like the Nikoloth you read before, were fairly prominent, but... If there's anything there, you didn't find it. Okay. Clark? I'll look later. Over the course of time, and due to boredom, Clark will draw his sacks and just have a look at it. Okay. There seemed to be a strange shine upon it whilst in the weird place. Mm -hmm. And he's just looking to see if that shine has uh, maintained or if it was a passing thing. Looking at the sacks closely, um, you do not at first see any sort of difference in the blade. But as you turn it slowly in the sun, at a certain angle, you can see just a little bit of a reflection of sunlight uh, that doesn't seem to be a natural reflection. It seems hmm. to be sparkled and edged along one side. Clark will sheath the blade and uh, consider speaking to wiser folks. All right. There's definitely something different, but you're not sure what it is. Okay. The two of you return back to the camp. Can't really call it a camp, I suppose. You don't really have anything there. The loitering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the loitering, yes. Just outside the edge of town. Um, as you come up again, you see the same sights as before. They're still continuing to load more things onto the boat. Uh, by now, they've made quick the basic repair on the side of the ship, the one that they had pulled some planks and kind of replaced them. Looks like it was probably an impact that was repaired uh, quickly, and now they've kind of pulled the quick repair away and have, have started on the fundamental work to make it a full, proper haul once more. Everyone is there and waiting. Yeah. So, so, how did it go? Good. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, those are most definitely pirates. Okay. Or they seem sketchy. I, I wouldn't know what pirates are, would, not, would I? 
I mean, you know, like the, water the word boats. would have heard. Thieves of the sea. Yeah, thieves yeah. of the yeah. sea, or, or you know of the, boats. Even the, you know they were before. sketchy. <laughs> yeah, the black sails kind of give it away, but uh, yeah, well, they don't seem to be attacking the town, so. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, we all ready to go? I'm so ready to go. So we are all going through the circle mm -hmm. into the library. We've pushed more people through this. Uh, more. We could also go to the Farhaven Circle instead. Oh wait, no, you have not actually have pushed this many people through this before. No, <laughs> uh, not by a long shot. Yeah, when we were coming back with um, the people from uh, crap, all my minions. Uh, we had like 10 people go through. I'm pretty sure we have a lot more now with this crowd. Uh, um, you have a lot more. Because there's, there's uh, uh, Iro, Shank, and Paul, as well as the yeah, Lana, seven. and like, like 11 more people after that. Okay, you said it was three before. Uh, no. No, no. It was, it was, it was, it was a nearly dozen. a dozen. Okay. Well. Th that's why I was like, I don't think we can take them all back. Okay, because before you'd mentioned like three or four. Um, well, hmm. Could they maybe, are we out of earshot from the other people right now, or? Okay. I mean, you could pull yourselves aside if you'd like, but yeah. they're there looking expectantly at you, trying to figure out what the heck's going on okay. next. Well, did you find anything out about that big ship over there? Are they looking for, uh, workers? She says they're pirates and it seems to be oh. accurate. If they're looking for workers, well, actually, I mean, pirate. Yeah, everyone wouldn't know this, but pirate ships are reasonably democratic. But um, just to be clear, I don't know where you picked up the word pirate because she never mentioned it. Well, she said just now, but yeah. then we yeah. did basically just for your for your assessment. Yeah, and that, that's why mm -hmm. me player was like, no, she wouldn't have made that that association. That's why they're sketchy. Well, everything in this town is sketchy. You say. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, how much do you have for resources for casting this spell? I can do it once. I only have the energy to do it once also. Hmm. Well. Because I also, I also can spend energy to contact um, our friends at the library to tell them to expect, to expect a large number of guests. Well, yeah, but that's not going to keep you from casting the spell. No. Um, hmm. Well, see, I also have some stuff that I picked up that you can use yeah, to I, cast I don't know the, spell. the stuff we were going to use. Oh, well, that's mine. Oh. Um, well, You uh, actually, I mean, we could go. We could send the bunch of you through, and you either get Emerald to. You know, you'd have to cast it to that mm -hmm. circle. I mean, it could get us back in the circle again. But hmm. No, well, maybe I will be taking a boat ride. We'd have to stay multiple days to cast it multiple times. Well, yeah, well, I, I think if you cast it and you lot go through, then me and the rest of them can wait here, and then you cast to the circle again tomorrow, once you've managed to, I, and I give you the address of the guy I bought them from. Uh, you just go and purchase another hundred gold worth and Seems like a lot of running back and forth between the circle in the jungle and here. Well, once you're back, you just have to cast a portal to the circle. No, actually, no, then you'd have to go through. Hmm? Then you cast one here, yes. and then you cast one back. You can probably go I'd have to two trips. Unless we could find the necessary materials here, but that's. Definitely. Well, no, you'd have to go through because we've only got enough materials for one teleport. But we, we could look for more materials in this city. I doubt but This it. is less a city and more of a hive. Do you know I what doubt, I mean? I doubt they have gem-encrusted uh, chalk here. 
And if they do, it's on that pirate ship, or uh, on that sketchy yeah. ship that I don't want to get yeah. involved with. No, I, th- I mean, you and a number of the others go through, and then just tomorrow, so come back here and then cast it again. So one thing you do know mm-hmm. about the spell yeah. is you do not have to go through it. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. But then but if I, I think cast it, it once, that amount of materials. I think you declared before that it's only one way. He can't it open it to way. a place and then have us go back, so he'd have to go through anyways. Uh, no. You open up the portal, mm-hmm. anyone can go through. Mm-hmm. Then he closes the portal without having gone through. He does not travel through it. Yeah. Yes. That's what Emerald But you, you've said before, when asked about us doing it from, um, uh, when you're doing, doing the downtime, he can't be in Vatur, cast it to this island, and then us on this island go through it. Right, but he doesn't have to be. He doesn't have to leave the island. He, he, he's saying send oh, yeah. people through, him stay here. Yeah. yeah. I just can't do the that. The thing is, he, he, can't, he needs... He, yeah, he needs the materials, so he has to go through. So he has to go through, get the materials. I thought you had said you already had twice as much material. No, I said no. I had one use of it yeah. okay. in case he didn't have any, and he didn't have any. Because right. I don't remember things. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, he would ha- so he would have to go through the mm-hmm. portal. Yep. No, it just means Get more materials. Come yeah. back, and then we go again. Yeah, yeah it just go means again several times because you see, you can't send like all the people through at the same time. Mm, we've got eighteen, and we've done ten before, so we could do nine in the trip. How long does the door open for? Six seconds. Well, six to twelve. It's end of his next turn in combat terms. Uh, can Clark make a mental leap beyond his reach? Jody, Possibly. Jody has an idea. Okay, what's the nature of the idea? Um, just the nature of doors. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, generally you open these doors uh, in air or against mm-hmm. a wall or something, right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Do, you have to, do you have to touch the door for it to open? Can you, can you make the thing happen away from you? Well, yes. I have to inscribe the circle first. Just thinking, you could drop a lot of people down a hole quicker than you can run them through a door. Mm. Yeah. How does it? Keeping in mind too that most of the people you have with you are kind of weak, rather exhausted, can't move very quickly. Hence, falling falls yeah. much quicker than walking. Yeah. In fact, inscribe the circle on the ground. Yeah. Okay. And then the portal appears. There's no gravity whatsoever. You simply okay. step through. But if you had Clark, Clark is thinking you, you create a portal off a cliff. Yeah, and just hope for the best that everyone makes it before no, it closes. It actually appears in an oval shape above the circle. Yeah. 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 What if I wrote the circle? You, you on would, wall, you would know this because like, you, you, you can certainly try. You have Clark no doesn't know that the, the, the yeah, I'll try, but not. He's only seen it done one way. So so it yeah. can be done other ways. No, I say, I say yeah. all it means is we we, I mean technically, me and a number of the others have to wait an extra day before we get back. I'm fine with that. I'll stay on the island if Amrin stays because not leaving someone alone on the island. And I'm not alone. I'm with my eight friends here. <laughs> so, um, can we camp where the teleportation circle is in that little settlement then? Oh, yeah. Well, we don't have to be at the circle to leave. No, I know. It says you can only go to the... So, yeah. We, I'd rather we, not get lost in the woods yeah. when I come we, back. You <laughs> should go there. Yeah, yeah, when you come back, yeah. Um, okay, so what's the plan? You're going to go to the yeah, old village? I'm going to cast the... Yeah, we'll set up a materials. camp at the old village. Okay. Um, Can I yep. use your materials? It's yeah. probably just a piece of chalk, really. Uh, yeah. How much are they working so, on? 50? Let's, 50 let's just to settle the plan before mm-hmm. we start enacting the plan halfway. Yeah. What's so. the fun in that? <laughs> I'll cast teleportation circle with Emerald's materials. Go back to the library. Okay, so you go to the area, you start crawl, uh, scraping away a part of the ground so you can actually draw the circle because it's infested and covered with weeds and vines and a whole lot of other things. Yeah, I was just going to describe like the plan first before we oh, okay. actually go with it. <laughs> so, but when you get back there, that's one of the yeah, things you know. We just find one of the. have to have a space to pass. Yeah, like one of the knocked down buildings mm-hmm. that still has like a stone floor or something okay. that we can just clean off the floor. It's a lot easier to clean that off than jungle okay. as well. It's also easier to inscribe things yeah. on the floor. Mm-hmm. So, so gonna, we're going to do that. I, I, You're is go- anybody coming with me, like, people the first time? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. There, should at least, there should be eight people go with you the first time, okay. and that'll leave 
nine of us for the second trip. So I will do a sending to Adrian first to tell him to expect people. I should know what level this is. Okay. Adrian, people coming, teleportation circle. Weak and pretty much refugees. <laughs> Escort them out. You have to go too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, then I'll add with me, so 15 words. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, you might want to say like six of them or something yeah. like that. Or eight so of them. Number. Yeah. Uh, well, it could be like him and him and. So you send that message. Of six of them or something. Yeah, I'll do a sending ex explaining okay. basically like. I would say send the refugees for and, and Zach is first. Yeah. We have a better yeah. chance of survival out here. Sure. Than mm. I just wanted to like yeah. take as few of the tired ones that are going to be slow because they might cause problems. True. Yeah. Getting us through, but yeah, what I mean, about, whatever. What about Iro, Shank, and Paul? They can help defend the settlement. Yeah, I mean, if we can get. Uh, the tired and the hungry through on the first trip, then uh, not all of them, but like eight of them with him, then we might as well do that. And oh, I have the people who can yeah. survive another night in the world, I guess. Unless anyone specifically, like if Shank wants to get off this island, wants to be gone, then Shank can go. Well, I feel like we three. should bring the device too and the stone. The first time we're currently I believe in his mm -hmm. uh, back. Yeah. Uh, take the device. I'd like to keep the stone with us in case it causes problems going through the portal. Also, I want to make sure the library has a reason to bring us back alive. <laughs> Do you say that out loud? I do it with, like, uh, ear semaphore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if your ears are quite that big. Um, um, the rest you received back from Adrian mm -hmm. is thanks for the warning. We'll have a squad of guards standing by, armed, if this is a trick. Okay. And it's we the will respond. Okay. So, I'll have, can I carry the device by myself? Oh yeah, yeah okay. it's heavy, but you can, you can do it. All right, so cast teleportation circle, wait until all the people go through, then go through myself with the device in my hands. Or like I said, Shank could carry it. That would Shank also want to have anything to do with it. Okay. Well, Shank was carrying it before, not the Olympic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. Because well, he wasn't strong <laughs> enough to carry it. To That's far well. that, that would be the response. Is it's, <laughs> yeah. it's definitely kind of. Off. I'm just saying, in terms of like, we've only got ten seconds to get people yeah. through. It might be best to have someone with strength moving it. And Shank can, can, can come with us too. Okay. So all the people, the captain and Shank and me, are all going to the library. Okay. Well, it won't be all of them. It'll be like seven of them. It's as much as be like four or five left. Yeah. Okay. All right. You spread somebody, out somebody's going to get cut in half by a gate. Spread about the spread on the ground or on the floor of mm -hmm. this place. And move all the vines out of the way and all of the creepy mm -hmm. crawlies that don't interfere with the circle. We might want to be on like the sides of the portal just to help people through fast, so there's yeah. no. Uh, what? If yeah. I'll let you two handle that. Yeah. You're going to throw in people. You inscribe the circle upon the ground. Mm -hmm. Infuse it with energy. Make an arcana roll as you feel resistance from the other side. 16 plus 13, so 29. Okay. You know that the portal was repaired, but obviously it's still a little glitchy. But the portal does appear after a moment's concentration. You, Shank, and seven of the people... Yeah, I, I think that's what, I mean, we put nine through before, so I'm assuming we go with about the same amount this time. And you've given them it's some kind of warning to the... Yeah, we've gotten happen. people ready. They're in yeah, like and a, we're on both sides. They're in a lineup, like. and we're on the sides to help people through fast. Okay. So we're, we're getting as many of the refugees as possible yeah. Yeah. through. Yeah, right. I think it's like seven refugees, Shank and Zagas. Okay. You rush on through the portal. Um... One thing you notice as Shank passes through just in front of you mm -hmm. is the Alembic seems to glow a little bit as it passes through. That's the last thing you guys see of that. And then you pass through yourself. The room is filled with about 15 guards, all of them fully armed, all of them with their swords drawn already. 
Adrian there as well as, uh, strangely, Nala, mm -hmm. who helped repair, repair the circle yeah. as well. Um, uh, but you did not see Emerald there. Um, after a moment's uh, confusion, especially from the people who just came through and found themselves stepping from a jungle into a very elaborate mansion, um, they are escorted by the guards. Um, Adrian comes over to you. Where are the rest? Uh, the rest. The gate doesn't stay long enough to teleport everybody at once. I need to recover, first of all, the rest a little bit. Maybe ask a few questions to you, Nala, and Emerald. Pick up more materials, go back, and bring the rest of them tomorrow. All Convoluted right. process, I know. I was um, a little eager and excited when I left. I may have forgotten to bring the necessary powder. Well, I hope you can speak to Emerald. I haven't seen him for the last few days. Are these people safe? What do you know about them? It's a long story. Are we like out of earshot? Are, are we out of earshot of the people? Or? Uh, no, they're being escorted out of the room. Though. Okay. He's gonna walk over to the side with you. Okay. I'm just gonna like holding the thing going, and you can see now little edges of of uh, glowing sparks around the outside of the Olympic. Right, Shank. Yeah, you can set this down actually. Thunk. Yeah. Just drops it on the ground. Gently. Uh, Picks it up again. Gently though, sets it down. <laughs> yeah. I'll carry it myself now that I'm okay. not exhausted. It feels kind of warm to the touch. Okay. Warmer than before. Oh yeah. Okay. Emerald will want this as quickly as possible. It's what um, is it? We're not entirely sure. It's. Uh, is it dangerous? From what I've been able to gather, it can be. But this is. What do you? Say? What is that thing? <laughs> I need to take a closer look. Now yes. it comes over to you to the uh, to it. Where did well, you find well, this? I wasn't there, but uh, Amrun and the others recovered it. It mm. could supposedly. It's story. broken, or yes, it needs with. it needs a power source. Emerald has kept it on the other side. I'll recover it tomorrow. Well, we need to study this. Yes, Maybe. I've already studied it a little bit, and I'll tell her my findings, like what each thing says, except for that okay. one. That one's erased. So she's kind of leading you out through the door. Adrian's standing there, but we weren't Wait. finished. Uh, Adrian, uh, your guards are these can... people safe? Yes, they are safe. Are you sure? Yes, uh, I can tell you how we encountered them. That's not what I mean. Safe. In... Are they safe? Are they who they think? Are they who they seem to be? Yes. Okay. Probably. Take your word for it, but I'm still going to double check. Yes. By all means, please do. Um, <laughs> and later on, once we have sort of. Yeah. <laughs> later on, once we've uh, studied this thing a little further, I can tell you more about our adventures. Sure. Uh, do you know if Emerald's been around? No. Nala, do you know if Emerald's been around? He would like to see this. Mm, probably I would like to see this. I have not seen him. He does not leave the temple much. Do you know if he's gotten better? No, he has not. Well, then, has he gotten worse? He's very old. And from what I can tell, that's a disease I cannot find a cure for. I hear the druids have one, but it's drastic. Huh, okay. I'll have to ask Alzara about it. But uh, in any case, this device should be kept extremely safe. Of course. And I can tell you more, and Amrun and Alzara and Clara can tell you more as well, because they were the ones who recovered it. Hmm. I don't remember what happened, but uh, something about the hum, which I'll also explain later. Hmm. Uh, where can I buy more materials for, and I'll describe materials for, like, teleportation? Yeah, well. it's it's a chalk infused with diamond dust, gotcha. with diamond crystals. Um, Do you think there would be any in, in, in Emerald's office, and is, is it unlocked and untrapped? <laughs> Are you kidding? Of course not. That's probably a a, a version of a supply room. Yeah. The, I mean, the, it, this is not a supply they typically would need. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> that's the issue. I did give you the the name and address of the guy that right. bought them. Yeah, because there was somebody in town who sold actually uh, stuff for magical incantations and things. Yeah, the dwarf, I think. But yeah, she takes the um, uh, embellic from you. Mm -hmm. and I will have this in my office. Excellent. Make sure it is well hidden. And I will not hide it. I will study it. Good. And I'll go buy some materials, then I'll, be, I'll return shortly after and help you study. Maybe and study it some more myself. Yes, yes, yes. She kind of waves. Calculator. She's already kind of forgotten that you exist <laughs> because there's something new for her to take a look at. Okay. I wave her goodbye and I ask if Adrian has any other questions. No. I'll take the orb out and make sure these people are who they think they Excellent. are. Excellent. And I may have some questions for you later. Concerning, about what? Concerning, uh, is anybody else around? 
Not really at this point. The guards have escorted all the people away. Concerning the Green Guard. What? Uh, there what was do you mean? The island we went to. Yes. Port Alta. There was a strange hive, and there was a treasure room. I can give you more detail. More details later. Oh, you think you've already given me too many details? I can't follow what the hell we you're found. About. Weapons and armor of people who belong to the Green Guard. We did. A long time ago. Yes. Emrune will bring them. Do you have them with you? Not with me, but my party has them. I'd like to take a look at those. I'll make sure they do do return it. Some of them may have been left alive, but I wrote down the names of the people who they were. I would be very interested in finding that out. Me too. (laughs) Our order has... Much of our history is lost. So anything that might eliminate it would be helpful. Yes. And I'd like to know... Do you know... Of course you don't know why they were there. I have a feeling, but we can go over that later. Of course. Right. And well, I'll wave him TTYL and go pick up the supplies. Okay. Um, Run into I, town. As you leave the main building, you do find that the guards have surrounded the uh, the uh, the refugees you brought with you, and Adrian has gone has brought forth the orb, and is in each person's hand, placing the orb, asking them the question, and they are drawing blood. So they're going to do the full routine for them. you know that, of course, there's a reason to be paranoid, but this seems even a little bit more extreme than before you left. Like ex- like how, how so more extreme? As in, this was the first thing he thought to do. Okay. There was no hesitation whatsoever, and his guards are fully armed, and they seem to be very much on the watch. Meanwhile... Mm-hmm. On the island. Who had the big stone hammer that we found in the cave? Iro, I believe. It's either Iro or Paul, because they were the only two who could yeah. lift it. Uh, I think Paul, actually. Because they were the only two who could lift it. Because Iro had the spear, yeah. and she kind of kept with that. I'll ask Paul if I can study the hammer. Study it? It's a hammer. Yes. But it seems to be a very powerful hammer. It's got a good balance, I'll give it that. It also obliterates stone really easily. Uh, it's I true. I like to look at it. Also, it's not actually Paul's. No, <laughs> oh, yes. He seems a little no. possessive and also right now kind of wants things. Because mm. it's dangerous out here. <laughs> It might be magic. <laughs> it seems to be powerful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys didn't actually look into what that was, did you? No, oh. no, we forgot about it after. Okay. So I am going to. We spend got it. None of us could use it. it. Keep it nearby. I may need it. Certainly. My sword is strong, but this could be powerful. Um, I will ritually cast detect magic, and then while I've got the detect magic on, I will study it for like an hour or so. Uh, yep, it is definitely magical. Do you uh, want to go hunting? Its magic would be evocation. Sure. I'll get us some food. I'll watch the people. Okay. Um, it's basi- very, very well made, too. Mm. Uh, basically, I do the thing that they have in the book for, here's how you figure out what a magic item does. When you don't you attune have, to it? Uh, effectively. Okay. Uh, although I think you do it even with unattu- non-attuned items. It's, that's just how you figure out what they do. Uh, well, you, you spend time with it and attuned to it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say like for even for the magic items that don't have attunement, uh, this mm-hmm. is what you do when you don't have identify. Uh, so yeah, I mean he'll. It's not easy. He'll yeah. What you do is you go to the library and research it most of the time. Um, but uh, but yeah, basically he spends an hour with it. He'll do the thing. He's got an open attunement slot, sure so heavy. it's not uh, <laughs> problematic. Um, All right, what's what's everybody else doing in the meantime? I'm going to go hunting for food. Clark's going to watch the group, make sure security is tight. Okay, Iro's there as well with you, so we'll trade off back and, and forth. Uh, I'm assuming that you didn't take. Um, I want to say Palavan, that's not his name. No, oh. Palana. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he would have stayed probably behind for the second there. group to be there with his people. Yeah. All right. Uh, make me a survival roll. Uh, 
10. 10? It's been a couple of hours, and it seems like most of the animals are, are staying away from you. You don't find anything to hunt in the first couple of hours. You spend an hour with the weapon, and what is your strength? 10. Despite not being able to wield it at all, um, you find that it is extraordinary and has a sense about it um, of well, extreme power. You hmm. discover the cudgel. Uh, do I get in this like case sense of the name? You or do. Like, no, okay. you do. Same as with the, the weapon that he had found before. Yeah. Actually, I think it's the arm we found before. Yeah, because I think, yeah, we had seen a sigil of the Green Guard on this as well, because I know yeah. we'd had two items. But he actually item. did know the name of the person. Yeah. No, there, there were three items. Okay, was there, there was armor? An armor. Okay, yeah, because I, I, that's the, the chainmail that I'm carrying. Yeah. And yeah. now that. Uh, the Cudgel of Sir Bromer Silvershard, Knight of the Green Guard. Well, you'll explain that a bit later. Are you still going to stay out hunting? Uh, I'm going to come back. Empty handed and say I could mm. use a hand. What are you hunting? says Iroh. Anything. I don't know what animals are in this area. I know there are boars, but other than that, I don't know. And I'm having a bit of struggles, because I don't usually hunt. I will go with you. And I will hunt for more than what I need to help the rest who need it. Besides, it gives me a time to figure what this does. She holds up the, the javelin. Thanks. Far away. Uh, I'm going to cast you will be fine. Freedom of Movement spot here. on mm -hmm. both of I'm going to cast Freedom of Movement on both of us okay. to make our lives easier. So that's Actually, two do you still have the javelin? I realize that's not the javelin. The top one. It's, no. uh, it's the spear. Oh, there we go. The other one. Okay. As she, as she uh, lifts it up, you can see just this little sparking kind of along the edge of the blade. Cool. Tell me, who is Sir Carlo Capno? I don't know. I have a sense that this is his. No, I think that's what Zacchaeus was saying. Mm -hmm. Then let us hunt. And she goes with you. So you can make the same roll with advantage now. Goodness for advantage. Total 20. 20? Okay. Versus a 1. <laughs> After about an hour, um, you spot the tracks of a wild boar mm -hmm. uh, and start to track it back. I was having a little bit of difficulty trying to move through the forest, not nearly as adept as she was just a day ago. Well, she, she has freedom of move movement on. Oh, that's true, actually, right. So. Um, Specifically for this. Good point, good point. <laughs> um, so, yes, she's, she's moving up with you. Uh, and you kind of motion with gestures rather than words mm -hmm. that there's something up ahead. She nods and smiles and grips the, the javelin strongly. And then there's a strange look that pa pa crosses across her face. It is of surprising joy as you see the javelin beside her turn into a bolt of lightning, streak through the, the uh, forests, mm -hmm. and there's a small explosion as it uh, nails the boar half cooking it uh, in the process less effort yeah. uh, and when you rush up to the to the boar finishing it off because these things are tough um, the, you can see the javelin just stick, sticking out standing as it was small streaks of lightning across it she pulls it out I like this whoever this Sir Capno is I wish to meet him and you return back with a pretty you know eight or five or eight foot long boar when you really stretch it out uh, between, well, actually, uh, Iro tells you to to tie it onto her back, and she will carry it back. Um, and you return back victorious, just as you see him sort of staring at this this uh, and grinning, uh, this very heavy hammer that he's kind of not really able to no, lift all out. No, well. I just I just sit around it and <laughs> whatnot. Uh, yeah, it's like a little track. Yeah. <laughs> he's worn down. Um. Paul, would you rather have this than the ring? I think you could do a lot of good work with this. It is a good hammer. 
It is a very good hammer. I am not one for rings. You mentioned, uh, well, I, I wanted you and Iroh to have gotten something from this uh, as well. If you wish to have this uh, rare item, then uh, I think that would be very good. It is something I've never seen before. It must be rare. Yes. I've um, seen many hammers, but this one has something special. Yes, very much. Um, well, I will uh, disattune from it and, and hand it back to him. It takes um, about an hour to unattune yep. something. So. Uh, he kind of just hand it back for an hour. And he hefts it with one hand. Yeah. Um, Gives it a few chest swings. Mm -hmm. And I'll get the ring back from him. Mm -hmm. The ring is way less powerful than this. This is really good for him. <laughs> um, he will uh, tell Elzera everything he learned about it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use my knowledge and cooking that I've acquired over the winter and make very good food. Mm. Iroh surprisingly helps you as if she's very adept at stripping wild animals down for food. Not so good at that part because uh, I'm mainly forward. She also fish. suggests eating the entire animal. I don't even want to look at it. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of things that you know the He'll intestines she doesn't really race. have much use for so she'll, she'll strip those out uh, and then kind of there's no running water here, so she will kind of just put them into a bag for now. Um, but she insists that the brains are a delicacy, and kind of scoops them out of the out of the skull. And whatever meat we don't use, I ask Emlyn if we can put in the bag of holding. Sure. This will easily fill the bag of holding. Yeah. Uh, and there holding will be some nice. left over that you don't eat as well. There's a lot of meat on one of these. Yeah. Um, I'm putting just the meat. Not any of the other bits. Clark will go gather some firewood for the night. Okay. Um, I um, will, with my, using my daggers as knives and stuff. There's not a lot of dry wood right here. It's all right. It's a lot of jungle and vine. Uh, so it takes you a little while to find some, some uh, firewood. Clark figures magic will, will work where there's too much moisture anyway. It's He's true. just gathering the fuel. <laughs> Um, and you set for a nice camp for the evening. Um, we have a very nice meal. After a while, uh, Paul kind of sits up straight. Hmm. What's the name of the hammer? Uh, the cudgel of Sir Bromer Silvershard, Knight of Green Guard. Who is Silvershard? And he kind of picks up the hammer and looks like he's looking at it anew, kind of swinging it, testing it out. Hmm. I believe that was the previous owner. Hmm. He was strong, and he takes it with two hands, walks over to one of the ruins that's still like, standing there, and gives it the good old baseball swing. <laughs> the thick pillar, about two feet thick stone, completely shatters and breaks away. <laughs> Very strong. Maybe that's what happened to the village. <laughs> On that note, Clark will have a look at the destruction and compare it to stuff that's already grown over and see if it matches. It's not far off. Okay. I mean, it didn't do mass damage, but yeah. what it did to the stone was utterly pulverizing. Which would be another reason you wouldn't find large stones of the upper floors if they were utterly vaporized. Mm -hmm. uh, but he gives it a few more test swings. Um, Elzera and Clark, though, both of you would realize, and actually Iroh as well, kind of looks over disapprovingly, the amount of noise he made when he did that meant that probably half the jungle heard that. It means we're not catching any more food tonight. Probably not. And with luck, you're not catching the attention of anything else as well. We're going to have to keep a very close guard. Uh, Paul? Yes? Uh, I would suggest caution when using that weapon. Caution? I suggest going full in every time I swing. Especially right now, where you may have just attracted the attention of the entire jungle. Let them come. My, my thought is, if you strike the ground with that hammer, you'll have no ground to stand on. And I'd hate to see you buried early. You see him trying to work through whether you're speaking literally or figuratively. <laughs> Don't tempt him. I think I see what you mean. Okay. Just be careful. 
When we have a foe, please feel free, but let's be conservative with the swings until then. It will take some getting used to. He's going to be heck of practice dummies. <laughs> Okay. So for tonight, I would suggest, just because of that now, we're going to do our normal four hours mm -hmm. and four hours, yep. but I would suggest the other people take two-hour watches yeah. with us. Yep. Yeah, have a couple of us on at each time. Yeah. All right. So so. One, two, three, about seven more. So yeah, we have plenty to cover. Who's on first watch? Um, um, Clark's just eaten. It's a big meal. He'll probably sleep first. Okay. Okay, I'll go and watch first then. Yeah. Uh, just you? Uh, well, me and one other person. Uh, yeah. Could be Paul or Iroh or... It's up to you. Yeah. So, two hour watches, I'm running someone else, I'm running someone else, then me and someone and me and someone. Mm -hmm. How about uh, Paul and me first, then Polana and me, then Iroh and, Iro and you, and then you do. Sure. Cool. Okay. Now I most of the tired people can sleep. So who's on the first watch? Me and Paul. Okay. Make a perception check with advantage. It's a 20. 20? Okay. The rest start to go and get their sleep and settle down for the evening. As they do, and with the remnants of your fire kind of slowly burning. I don't think you're going to probably keep it longer than you need to. It's not cold. If it's no. Uh, but the light is yeah. nice. Fire keeps animals away. Yeah. So it might be right. good to keep feeding. Yeah, smoke would help too. So yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll just keep a small fire. Keep the mosquitoes away. Mm -hmm. With the, uh, the fire then uh, burning still, you notice just how incredibly still the world is. Something you kind of noticed a little bit last night, but now even another night outside of the hum, you didn't realize just how pervasive that sound had been. You also hear no animals, no bird song, no rustle of leaves, nothing, except for the shifting light coming from the fire. Who's the second shift? Uh, me and Polana. Okay, make another roll. This time without advantage. Because Polana's exhausted. Fourteen. Fourteen? Okay. You end up having to wake up Polan a couple of times during the night. He's trying hard to stay awake, but you can see oh. that there's numerous things happening at the same time. Yeah. If he is, I'll let him sleep and take it myself. Okay. Part of it is the fact that this whole change has happened very rapidly. Mm -hmm. You remember the shift of being in the hum. But there's something else, too. Having seen the others leave already, there's a certain sense of peace that seems to have settled upon them. He had been pretty frantic a little bit before, trying to make sure everything was going on, not really sure, relying a lot on what he didn't know, mm -hmm. on power. But now he finally seems to find some rest. Over those couple of hours, it seems as though the forest, the jungle around you rather, starts to also come a bit to relaxation. As you start to hear the sounds, the echoing sounds of some birds going off in mm -hmm. one tree and then bouncing around. Life is beginning to return. I ponder <laughs> if I hear any monkeys. No. Third shift. Me and Iro. Okay. You roll with advantage. Advantage has been preventing me from ones today, apparently. There you go. Um, but that is a twenty-six. Twenty-six. Okay. Nineteen on the die. <laughs> you and Iro are kind of a return to where you were earlier. Two hunters kind of watching the change in the woods around you as things start to move in again. Mm -hmm. They had been scared off probably by the loud noises. Now they're starting to become curious as to what created these loud noises. Every once in a while there's a shift in a vine and you can hear off in the distance the echoing sound one and then answered by another one. A, a, a sound something like a monkey off in one side way over there then as if answered on another side okay, monkeys. <laughs> but nothing seems to move closer Iroh looks a little restless once again hefting the spear but noticing that it doesn't seem to have that same lightning streak along it 
I would relish a bit of night hunting if we were in different circumstances. And she looks over at the sleeping few of the refugees still. Yeah. I'm not much of a hunter, but I'll do it if I need to. We take what we must, because we need it. I am strangely, however, looking forward, and she takes the little thin whip that she's been using mm -hmm. and crack along her backside, catching some large gnat that had been just done on her. I'm strangely looking forward to the return of the city, however. I'm sure I will grow tired of it in time. How do you do it? You are a creature of nature, are you not? Yeah. I guess I just get it. You get it. I, like, touch a tree while I'm talking. Okay. I... I can understand what's happening in nature. No, I, how do you deal with the city? Nature, I understand. It is wild. It is tooth and claw. It is take or be taken. But the city... There's something strange when the knife that stabs you may not even be seen. Where it might take your pocket and say that it is legal. I tolerate it because the people I care about it feel more comfortable there. Not because I prefer it. I see. I will think on this. It's... Being in a city allows me to be with the people I care about. And that's the main reason why I go. Hmm. There's also a lot of use to cities. I have found little. I don't have the capability of doing certain things on my own. But I can get services. I can pay someone to do those things for me or to provide equipment for me to be able to do things that I wouldn't be able to get otherwise. I see. I had thought that you druids were like our tribe, but perhaps maybe you are not. I rely upon my tribe for things that I cannot do. I do not have to pay them. Not a lot of druids that I know stay close to one another. A lot of people just go and do their own thing, maybe in very small groups, and, and get together in large groups for special occasions. I see. Strange. That you have a tribe that you leave to find strangers to help you. Yeah. I'm not a stranger. <laughs> You are the strangest of all. <laughs> <laughs> I will accept that. For example, I'm really bad at wood woodworking, but I'll pay my brother to uh, to fix my cabin for me. You would pay your brother? He puts a lot of time and uh, he, he could be making money for it. I would prefer paying him for the services that he gives me. He always gives me a discount and I know this. Can you not do something for him? That's what I do sometimes. Hmm. It's still a payment. We do not use money much, except when dealing from, with those outside the tribe. It is a waste. It is... It lacks person. I see that. It is cold and disconnected. Perhaps it has uses, but... I do not prefer it. Neither do I, but sometimes you have to do things that you don't feel the most comfortable with. That is my entire apprenticeship. It was not my choice, but I have accepted it. And you kind of sit in silence yeah. for the rest of the shift. Who's up next? Me and Clark. All right.
So now you can choose. One of you can roll with advantage, or both of you can roll. Just straight up roll. I relent. What do you want to do? <laughs> I don't care either way. This is a perception check. Let's roll together. Cool. All right. Both get ones. That'd be great. That'd be great. <laughs> 19. Perception. Eight. 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 22. Okay. Wow. Whoa. Wow. He has an 18, I have a 7. Or, or an 8, I have a 7. Yeah. I rolled wow. a 12. <laughs> You're usually the most perceptive person around. That's why it's... I've been up for a while. Okay. Usually whatever she doesn't catch, Clark does. It's true. We work, we work well together. <laughs> now between the two of you, you had noted uh, as Ira had gone to sleep and you had arisen, one of the things you would have mentioned was that you did hear more animal sounds, in particular monkeys. And as you go through, you find yourself hearing a few more, but still at quite a distance. Do you have anything to say to each other? What's going on? Not much. Okay. Slightly worried about Zach is doing something stupid. You can't control that. Just behind my chair. You can't. <laughs> but, yeah. Other than that, we're here. Alright. Um, Clark's gonna spend some of his watch uh, fashioning uh, small torches out of okay. the local wood, wood that's found. Okay. I pull ten torches out of my bag when I see this. Okay, Clark will strap those to longer sticks of wood and basically do tiki torches okay. around the camp. Um, as you're moving around, um, one thing that both of you end up kind of noticing Clark, you're the first to notice, and then kind of gesture over as you notice as well, is the hammer, which is as standing straight up mm -hmm. beside Paul as he sleeps, is glowing slightly. Uh, Clark will point. I'll go and like lightly tap it with my foot. Like it does not move. I, I'm not expecting it to. Yeah. It's but like, it's like kicking a mountain. Yeah, it does it feels that. Like. Can I see the card again just so I make sure? I want to get uh, mm -hmm. Amory. Yeah, maybe, I have some uh, questions about the last two lines together. But, uh, yeah. yeah. It's like it's just shopping and buying new robes because he needs, like, Remember I can oh, hear yeah. you. That was copy-pasted from another thing, so I'll have to, I'll have to fix that up. Um, but yeah, no, I just kind of, like, tap it to see if yeah, it'll, like, explode. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. But it is a noticeable glow. Yeah. Uh, that um, is... After you get the torches up, you actually realize it's about as bright as a torch is. Interesting. Um, but you set the torches a reasonable distance, not covering the whole town. Oh, just enough to just enough the area. Give everyone else who could use some light if danger comes some light. Okay. As the couple of hours progresses and you've set up all these torches. You hear the sounds of the monkeys receding into the distance. Apparently, they did not like the sight of lots of fire. Hmm. And the shift comes to an end. And is that the last shift? Or yeah. Yep. As the sun rises up above the trees, it's still dark for quite some considerable time as you're starting to wake the others, and they're starting to come back to life. Try to conserve the torches as best we can. Okay. Um, I'll that the evening, tiki torches with the directions you're already given, <laughs> it's not a problem Can to I? go and purchase more of that chalk list. Yeah, I'll buy like three uses worth, so minus 150 gold pieces. Yep. One to be safe, one to get there, one to get back. It's actually the last of their stock. They're hoping to get more in, but that's all they have for now. Mm. Okay. Uh, it's kind of... The price doesn't exactly tell you how expensive it is to actually get it, mm -hmm. because once you buy a lot of it, you can get it for a better price. But if they don't have the materials to make it, that's when it gets more expensive. Yeah. Okay, so I'm glad I came here. We should have more in in a week or two. Excellent. Thanks for letting me know. We're still waiting on some shipments through through Dren. I'll nod and we'll let them know I may be back at that time. All right. You go back to your own bed for the evening, yeah. unless you go what, to someone else. What time, time is it now? <laughs> What time in the evening is it now? Like, um, it's probably <laughs> early evening at this okay. point. 
<laughs> Sackis in tattered robes that don't fit him any longer swings by the mansion. No, of, I have to close uh, that. Of, of what's her face? I have to close. Like, hey, that herself cleaning. <laughs> I look, like a, I look like a fancy lead dress yeah. pirate now. Because otherwise I was pretty much naked. <laughs> uh, and I'll also like swing by the other... I'm assuming like the library has like a clothes shop or something. Or no. Not really. They have okay. kind of... Actually, they have nothing at all really for that. They might okay, have a seamstress or... Because I figured they'd no, have like the scholarly supplies and robes or like what scholars wear. So. Uh, no, they have a bit of ink and they have paper. Gotcha. And they have book binding materials, some paints. Um, but no, there's. they're in the middle of a city. They would go to a seamstress in yeah. the city to get that stuff. Yeah. So I'll spend another gold piece at the first shop I see to buy a rent, like, basic room. It's very basic. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally one color. Black, right? Uh, nope. It's gray. Okay. Mm. Gray or brown? Red. Uh, gray or brown? Uh, they do have a brown. Okay, I'll yeah. pick brown, because... Okay. Because for my cosplay, my, my from, brown. So. From, <laughs> from what you understand, the gray is probably just the brown without some of the pigment in it. You don't really ask what the pigment actually is. <laughs> so and yeah, you return back to... You can eat at the regular kitchen. Yeah. The entire jungle experience completely forgotten. No mosquitoes. You never have to go back there again. <laughs> uh, well, maybe just once. For a few <laughs> minutes. Okay, <laughs> so I will... Yeah, there's nothing else I actually have time to do at that time, so I'll just... Okay. I'd like to talk to Emerald, but... Everything seems weirdly normal. Yeah. After spending several days in the jungle, getting back to your old routine seems strange, a little dull, but at least it's predictable. Yeah. The food is kind of normal. It's not conjured out of nowhere and then made to temporarily taste better. Yeah. Uh, actually it's actually food. made food. And your room is so much as you've room. Except my bed feels smaller. It does. Yeah, yeah. yeah your feet hang over the it's edge. Like, yeah. Trust me on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will stop by and... Well, did Miley originally know we were going on this mission? I think so, or no? Or was it secret between us? It was us? pretty quiet. Okay. We didn't really advertise it all that much. Gotcha. Emerald yeah, specifically to wanted to have you guys not have everybody know anyway. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell her at some point after her... Is she, is she herself going to be confirmed? But yeah, I'll just retreat to my room, have a long rest. Okay. Or I'll, I'll stop by Nala's office first, though. To okay. see if she she's is still working yeah. on this, trying to decipher it. Um, I'll point out, like, the eight of them that I do know. And she adds that to her notes. Uh, you can see that she's been already making conjectures. She's right about three of them. Nice. She, hadn't, she doesn't even know the language, but she was right about three of them. Okay. Um, you can see that she's she's casting some sort of strange spell that she's maintaining. It's mm -hmm. an illusion of what she thinks the thing will be. She's actually shaping the illusion over it to try to see what fits. Cool. Um, it's a simple static illusion mm. spell, but the way that she's using it is something that I've probably seen before. Okay. Um, I'll keep that in mind. I'll ask her, yeah, have you discovered anything aside mm. from the meaning? You didn't say very much, so I've had to interpret a few things. I know something goes in here. She cracks it open. Yeah. Something very, very powerful. From she kind of rubs some of the ashes in there. Very powerful. We should have it back tomorrow. Actually, you have some of the fuel. Yes. I know it is an alembic used to take magic and transform it. Mm -hmm. Very, very old. Hundreds, yes. maybe more. Do you know who would have created it? Do you know, the protections that were keeping the library safe before, did Emerald create those? And do you think Yes, as far as I know. Him and Garbo. Okay. Do you think they... I've asked Garbo to come up, but he's busy. Was he supposed to know about this? Garbo would know about this. Okay. Alright. And uh, just make sure they can confirm he is who he actually is first. But that goes without saying. He has a tag. He'll be fine. Orb. No, no. Tags. And she lifts up her arm and pulls back her, her uh, cloth on the, on the robe. Mm -hmm. And you can see now that there is a ring that has been inserted through the skin that comes back out. Okay. When you have one of these, you will not need the oil. Good to know. Gerbo has been hard at work. Yes. I have to talk to him as soon as I return. Mm. 
Anyway, I hope him and Emerald are strong enough now to reestablish the protections. Terrible will be fine. What about Emerald? Do you think he can succeed? He is too old. Do you think he can help? He will have to. But he is grown too old. He lost more than his arm. What do you mean? Lost some of his I'm lifespan? I'm not sure what happened to him. But more than his arm was left behind. Is this, do you think this is something similar to what happened to Tia at some point last year? <laughs> mm, I know. I think that was different. Hopefully he lets us know what did happen and why it happened. He won't answer my questions. Yeah, he I think he's afraid of the answers. I'll see if I can get some answers. But for now, I need to retreat to my quarters and have some rest in my own freaking bed. Which is a little small for me now. Yeah, there was a weird, uh, wild magic going on everywhere. Mm -hmm. You cast a spell, and sometimes you got taller, sometimes you got older, younger, sometimes a fireball blew up in your face. It was... A bit anxiety-inducing, to be honest. And that is what's going in here. Hmm. And that's what's going in here. I don't know. Hmm. Sounds interesting. Oh, it definitely is. I'm just glad to be able to study it away from the magical attack. I mean, imagine the fireball going off in your face. N -n -n not that it happened to me, of course, but uh, you identify something and boom! It was. Sounds powerful. Interesting, but not very fun. I mean, assuming somebody were to cast an identify, cast a spell to identify something, and seems like a good place to go away from magic people. Mm hmm. Away from magic people. Yeah. Possibly. Whereas it's as dangerous to them as it is to you. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe I'll visit someday. Uh, if you do, just let me know. There are a few precautions that must be taken. Hmm. I would hear more, but I'm going to study this. Excellent. Let me know what you find out. I'll be mm -hmm. back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Go now. And I'll wave. She, she's not looking at me, but it's... She's already it's looking yeah. back at the thing and going back to It's now. Uh, what do I expect? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you head back. It is a little weird that your feet hang over the edge. Yeah. Next day. <sighs> I'll tell Adrian to expect more people again. Okay. Uh, once again, he's got guards stationed up there. And he, uh, he himself is being trailed by a second command pretty much all the time. Okay. So I is he going to be... Uh, hmm? I should make sure that Gergo sees you at some point. I have to make sure you have a tag on you if we're going to be letting you roll about like this. Alright. How long does it how long does the tagging process take? Uh, usually no more than an hour. It's a bit painful, but that'll pass too. Yeah, yeah I've felt some stuff before. Them, so. We can... Should be fine. I should, I should return shortly. Way too easy to. So I'll cast the uh, teleportation circle spell to go. I'm not even gonna bother like re regaining my level five spell slots because I'm, I'm about to spend both of them. So. Okay. Cast See. teleportation circle to go. Okay. You arrive once again in the dark, the dark space underground. Yeah. Mage hand. Okay. More. Emrin will be waiting outside. I will cast light on this, the plant that's around it. Because I've slept, I can now get that. <laughs> the vine withers away quickly. Retreating underground. You're not exactly sure if you killed it so much as it's gone for now. Eh, that's fine. Yep. Uh, there's a brief twinge as you cast the Mage Hand spell once again and it reaches in. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of wondering... Is there a little bit of Prina still stuck in those gears? No. <laughs> Wouldn't she have just like poofed? <laughs> you can't see. I could cast Arcana, but I don't know if I want to. <laughs> and with that, you pull the, the lever. The door creaks open once again. And you see a group of imposters. Oh, wait, no. Your friends standing around. Uh, uh, right. uh. Paul's wielding the big hammer now on one shoulder. His big sword still stuck in the scabbard on the back. Let's Ira's get out of here. Well. Hmm? 
Paul's currently trying to figure out how to attach the hammer to the end of the sword. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a hammer sword chuck. Mm. That's chained between um, the two of them. <laughs> Emin will quickly try to grab at least one or two of the bodies to clean the place up a bit and just take them outside. Okay. So. Mind missing their but heads. Them. Yeah, well, they're one with the stone now. Pretty much. Um, just to start cleaning it up a bit, but uh, we only have a couple of minutes. So yeah, the thing will close sure. fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, no, nobody's going to see down there, it's fine, but... Okay, yeah. cool. If yeah, there's people a, come through later. If there's a stone to be had, uh, yay big, from the from the settlement, mm -hmm. Clark will take it. Okay, you can easily find a stone like that. Mm. You clear off the floor off of one of these places mm -hmm. again, maybe even the same one you yeah. used before. Draw out the circle, and then bring the portal. Okay. This time it feels smoother than before, as though every time you use that portal it gets a little bit easier. And the rest of you rush on through. Mm -hmm. You find on the other side a dozen armed guards. Mm -hmm. and, and again, we would have had the the weaker people at the front, and we help quickly get. Well, one of us goes through both sides. We help them through, and then we're out. And yep. Yeah. Iro actually is the one that has the most difficult problem mm -hmm. because she has to bend down so low to get through the portal. I would insist that she go before I do. That'll maybe incentivize her to move fast too. She does move quickly. Uh, it's just more of an, she awkward, just has yeah, to. an awkward movement for her. She lies down backwards and limbos. Through the not, not quite Center that. <laughs> um, As you move through and find yourself once more in the great library. Of it. Oh, one thing I wanted to do before, uh, just after we get up, I checked the lead ball. Okay. How is it doing? The lead is smooth on the outside, as though it has reformed from being melted. Okay, back in the bag for now, but it's getting out of the bag soon. Okay, so yeah, when we get through, you know, hello, we're fine, it's us. Um, Adrian smiles at seeing the rest of you as well. It's good to have you all back in one place. Now, if you'll travel with me and my guards, we'll verify you are who you say you are. And I really sure. hope that you are. Yes. We, we figured Where? it would be easier for us to survive another night in the jungle than them. Yeah, we've talked to some of them, and I don't know if I understand half of the story they're telling me, but... If I even, even half of it is even true, it's quite the place. Yes. I, I say in Vespario, it is. <laughs> it gives you the sort of side eye. She really is who she says she is. <laughs> yeah, we'll test her first. Uh, and they proceed to get you through the testing, same as before. And as usual, the orb does flicker strangely when it encounters you, but combined with the blood test, they seem to be saying it's well. And. I've already told Zach is here, but you'll have to get tagged if you're going to be coming in and out of the library frequently. We're putting new procedures in place. Understood. Uh, how does a tagging work exactly? Is, it, is this magical? I can't really explain that. Gerbro might be able to explain, but in essence, if I understand what he and Imro were describing, um, we're attaching a fetter to your soul. Yeah, it's not happening. This thank you, but I will stay outside of the library. Understood. It I'll makes me a little well. nervous as well. As you wish. I it does make it well. easier to make sure you are who you say you are. I'll have to know more before I go through with it then. Huh. Uh, you work here. Yes, I suppose. You will be going through it. I'm just Large thinking of any potential any consequences. <laughs> uh -huh. And with that, we'll call this session to a close. <laughs> but I can't even like do a sending to Emerald? Uh, you can do a sound okay. again, we'll do that one last thing. All right. I'm too nice. I should not let you guys do one last thing because you like six of them. One more thing. <laughs> one more what thing. What is your sending to him? Right? We have the device and power source. Just so he knows. Okay. Uh, one word response. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Uh, actually, one more thing that I will introduce as Clark checks his box. Mm -hmm. There is a short note inside. Ah. A good ship if you're on the right side. Oh, okay. Uh, is there any mention of the coin sent? No. Hmm. Okay. And with that, 
<laughs> Perhaps we will do the actual end. For real this time? For real this time. Mm-hmm. We should be returning in a week with a new episode, uh, mm-hmm. provided uh, not too many other things get in my way. I just uh, realized I forgot to share last week's episode on the page, but I will do that. You fired. Um, <laughs> <laughs> human. But for one last time, let's tell people how they can uh, let people know about things and uh, let people know about more. Oh, actually, uh, one thing I do want to say is we are looking to get some art for the characters. Pat has already commissioned an artist to make a character mm-hmm. sketch of uh, Van Roon. If you want to yep. show the camera, mm-hmm. we'll have a, a better picture up there. on the... Uh, but it is on the Watchers of the Isles Do you want to switch page. to the map camera? Yeah, there we go. Switch to the overhead. So, um, it's delightful art. We're going to be getting more of that. We'll let you know where we got it from and uh, who the artist is if you want to commission your own. It came around two days, I think. It was three days. It took a couple of days, yeah, yeah for that, for the, it's just for the simple artwork. And it's, a, it's 50 US, Yeah. so whatever your conversion rate would be. It's really cool, so we really appreciate that. And, uh, but uh, if, you, you know, if you'd like to make art mm-hmm. to try to illustrate what the hell we're doing here, the link, that'd be really cool. The link will be in the description of the video. They sure. And we Absolutely. will credit you for your work. Absolutely. Uh, again, go to uh, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. That's where all of my stuff is, and the subset of that is Legends of the Drowned Isles. Go to facebook.com slash now. Is L-O-T-D-I is the... L-O-T-D-I is the, is the hashtag I have been using okay. for anything that we post. And by we, I mean me. Okay. And look so. for the Watchers group, or just look for the page. Join in. You'll find all the videos there. Um... Eventually, I think we want to try to stream again, but it's going to take us some technological over, over things to overcome. Mm. Uh, but in the meantime, you can certainly find the videos there. Share, share. W- sorry, you tell. Like, them. subscribe, and hit the bell yeah. for more notifications. And share, share. And please share. Sharing is caring. There you go. Uh, and with that, if I can find my title page once more, we'll call it to a close. Good night, Good night. folks. Yeah.